Welcome to Chronic Curiosity, where we have real conversations with real people, from everything to anything, in attempts to facilitate dialogue with our fellow humans, and hopefully your curiosity as well as ours. If you can withstand the show, we ask, most importantly, that you tell your friends and family, but also, you can pick up some merch, or just donate to the show at chronic-curiosity.com in USD or Bitcoin. If you feel so obliged, you can give us a good rating and follow on whatever podcast platform you so choose. But please feel free to reach out to us on the website or the socials, which can also be found on the website, chronic-curiosity.com. And here we go. So you have your books booked all the way out for what, until past the summer? The end of October. Jeez. Yeah. How much do you plan though? Like how much is that? Like not to like, I mean, we, if you want to start, we just do it. But how much of that is like, uh, yeah. Cause you're going to waste it. Yeah. No, we just, we just do that. I try, I'll just start it right now. Boom. There it started somewhere, Boom. somewhere before this. Um, how much of that is like, do you actually like book full or do you leave like spots open? Like, because if you're booked out, if it's yeah. at the end of <clears throat> March right now and you're booked all the way till October. Yeah. Like you have to leave a little bit of, wiggle room for yourself in there don't you or you yeah just i slam it out i uh so at first i didn't and then i realized pretty quick that that was like a giant fuck up um so i started telling um the kai my um receptionist girl to basically take two days at the end of every month and I scheduled those off for like reschedule days right. so that if something happens to somebody, especially with all the COVID shit, you know, yeah. it got real bad for a minute because everybody's canceling left and right. And it's like, well, I can't get you back in until because I didn't have time and I got I was working all my days off to do that. But then that takes away from me being a dad and like having a life of my own. Right. So, um, yeah, so I basically just take two days at the end of the month, and then if I need to throw somebody in those days, I just use them for that. I got you. Yeah, but I mean, also like before that's I even still, that's a pretty packed. It, I mean, that's it tight. is. <laughs> but I try to, I try to like look at everything that I have and mark it down. So like, I'll go through the summer and take random Saturdays and just mark them off to go down the river and drink. Like that's that's you know that's Schedule, what we do. Scheduled vacation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. Um. But I mean, yeah, for the most part, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's all kind of a mess. And I'm still like, this is only the, the second time that I've used her like second booking period. So we're still kind of working some stuff out to kind of get it down. Um, but as long as I take it off ahead of time, if I know I have it, but I mean, you know, my daughter wants to play softball. She wants to do stuff like that. Cause she's going to be eight. So she's like, it's, it's about to be hilarious. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, when stuff like that happens, I want to be able to go. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm stuck at work and I can't go to anything. So, I mean, I, and a lot of times, like I'll only book one thing a day because nobody, most of the time that people come to me, it's for big stuff now. Like nobody wants to wait six months to come in for a little tattoo. Right. So everybody that comes in, they're getting big pieces. So I'll start it at one o'clock. Um, but I don't even normally start tattooing until after maybe two o'clock because I hand stencil everything. Right. They get there, I have to print it out, size it up, and then I hand stencil everything. And everybody gives me shit for it, but it's just more comfortable for me to do. Like I just, I don't know, I feel more comfortable making that. What's the other option than hand stenciling? Um, so most people, you either draw your, depending on what style you do, like people will draw their tattoos or they'll like me, I Photoshop a lot of the stuff together on my iPad to make like realistic designs. And then, um, you can on your iPad, you can like draw everything out and then it's just a layer of all the lines so that when you come in, you just take that line drawing and you can run it straight through a thermal fax and it'll print out the lines. So you're basically like making a stencil of just the lines and you can do that. You're basically printing the stencil out essentially versus yes. hand drawing it. So you hand draw all of this. I, I don't hand draw it. I just take the, I print out the picture, the realistic picture, and then I put it on this piece of transfer oh, paper. He, he's got the stash. Oh man, look at that. He was hoping you had Woo. the stash today. <laughs> yeah. Still in all its glory. <laughs> um, Tony's here. Uh, we, I haven't technically, I waited to, for Tony to get here to, to 
say your name because he always yells at me for, to introduce people. Oh, he yells at you. He <laughs> yells at me. He gives me that look and that stash wiggles around at uh, me. Oh, yeah. And so we have Ryan Richardson today, my uh, personal, not my personal tattoo, my most recent <laughs> tattoo artist that I've been getting a tattoo from for the last like five years that we finally finished it. Yeah. It's, but, been, a, it's been a. A thing for sure, <laughs> yeah. It was a process, yeah. But uh, yeah, he was just talking about. Um, we just like literally just started because he started talking about how he's booked all the way out till October, yeah, the end of October, yeah, and how his whole process just kind of works. Yeah, so, sounds like a good problem to have a blessing and a curse for sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I said, like I love my job, I don't want to hate on it or whatever, but I mean, it definitely gets to a point where it's overwhelming, you know, it's like. I don't know, man. Uh, I love it. But it's one of those jobs where like every day that I show up, it's just a lot of pressure. Like every day I show up, I'm like literally people are like, there's a meme going around right now for tattooers and stuff. And it, it just really hits. But it's talking about how like every day you show up, you're supposed to, you're like just expected to create a masterpiece. Yeah. Like no pressure. It's that just for the rest forever, of their life. For the yeah. last, forever yeah. for somebody. Not <laughs> yeah. forever, but forever for them. Yeah. You hope. <laughs> yeah 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 i never thought i never looked at it that way yeah from that perspective of what yeah, i mean every like. everybody that comes in that's what they want you know they want your best and you have to like try to deliver that daily so it's like all right and then you go to work and i work all day and then when i come home i got to do the dad thing and then once i put her to bed um then i have to start working on my designs for the next day and then by the time i go to bed it might be three four o'clock in the morning and then you wake up and then you take your her to school or whatever and then you repeat like you just right. do it again well i think it's a lot something that a lot of people don't realize is they're like anytime somebody's like crafting something i'm just like using it as a general term like whether it be you know i don't know handmade countertops or cabinets or handmade whatever it is like something that, that you are solely responsible for the entirety of that work yeah like there's so much that goes into that that there's a, what was it? There was a, there was kind of like a, like a, I guess it was kind of like a meme reel thing going around for a while. It was a, some song about why my, sh why my shit costs so much. Oh yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was now, yeah. but it's like, there's cause all, it takes fucking time. People yeah, there's like, all it takes a lot of ones. time. Like <clears throat> how much are you like per, per hour that you're tattooing? How much time do you think goes into all of that beforehand? Would you, if you had to like throw a number out there, what do you mean? Like all the designing, the, the planning, the, sketching. I don't see, I don't, I don't charge I necessarily. Charge yeah. I don't charge for it. Cause it's, it's just kind of like part of it, but it does kind of take effect into what I charge hourly. So I charge one fifty an hour for the first three hours. Uh, and then after that, it drops down to a hundred bucks. And I should have just kept it at one fifty hourly, honestly, cause it's kind of a pain in the ass, but, um, right. At first, I honestly kind of did it because I was so busy, and it was like, well, this will kind of weed it out. But then it didn't work, and it just, <laughs> everybody just kept coming. I was like, well, shit, okay. Well, supply and demand. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't. Booked it, out talk, too. Yeah, yeah not, it, it not trying to piss off your customers, but right, sometimes yeah. you've got to raise those prices. And, and that was the thing, man. Like, I, I want to be, um, I don't know, like, accessible to everybody. You know what I mean? Right. Like, there's a lot of people that... Um, I know tattoos are expensive and I know there's a lot of people that like, I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't like for those people. So I don't want to get to the point where it's just like, well, this is how much I am and you can't afford me. You know, like I don't want to be a dick, but right. at the same time, it's like, definitely I've put in a lot of time. I put in a lot of shit to get better. So I, you know, and I had a girl one time that was giving me shit for it. And, uh, just like, I don't know, just whatever. But, it's like, okay, let me ask you something. Like if you've had the same job for 10 years and you had the chance to give yourself a raise, but you never did in 10 years after 10 years, don't you think you would give yourself a raise if you were capable of doing it? And she's like, well, yeah. And I was like, okay, then shut the fuck up. Like, you know, why would I, why would I not? Like, yeah. well, not only that, like if, like, I understand, like you have the same job and you're doing the exact same, if you have the same out, like output and the same product that you're doing after 10 years. Yeah. Well, okay, then, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. you get a raise for consistency. Right. Well, you know, and maybe you get a little raise. You, 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 hope, get a little you, raise. Hope, you hope that's never the case. Right. Though. But maybe you get a little raise for consistency. But if you're 
doing a, a, a job that's that detailed and intense and you're getting better. I mean, yeah. And you have more and more people coming to you then we'll, you, you have to pay what you're, you know, when you it, pay what you're worth. It really hit me when I was like, I was doing portraits, whether it be animal portraits. Cause I mean, most of the stuff that I do, it's all like black and gray realism. Like that's probably 90% of like what I do. Um, and it got to a point where I'm doing like realistic animals and like portraits of people and all of this stuff. And you know, it's three and a half hours and I'm like, okay, 350 bucks. And then I'm just like, man, I am really kind of fucking myself right here. Yeah. Like, why am I doing this? So I, I upped the prices to kind of make up specifically for that. Um, because it's not really three and a half hours. How much time do you spend? Yeah, that, that, right. that was, right. that was yeah. the point that Your I was trying to get. At. Only family time and yeah. dad time. Like, that's a lot. Is it, a it is. Three to one ratio, a four to one ratio, like for that yeah. preparation. Yeah, I mean, it. I don't know. I sometimes I'm just I'm too nice about the situation, I it guess. Like, you are. like I, like, I mean, <laughs> that's what it every, like. I have so many people telling me all the time, like, you need to just do, you know, do this and do that. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't need to be, I don't need to be that guy. Like I live comfortably. My shit's taken care of. People get, you know, good tattoos. I still, I do it more for, obviously money is a big thing. Like I need to survive. You know what I mean? But like, I do like, genuinely like what i do so i don't know it's nice like there are days you know shit happens and i can go into work and just immerse myself in it and everything else just goes out the window because i'm just like my brain has so much focus on what i'm doing you know what i mean so i don't really have time to like worry about other shit that's nice yeah. well, I think, I mean, I'm, maybe i'm being too front with you here but I think you're almost doing yourself a, a, t a tad bit of disservice. Like, you know, I don't think people have to, like, a, I'm just going to call you a craftsman. Would you identify with that? Yeah, that, is, that is that okay? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> An artist? Cra yeah. Craftsman of the body. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I think, like, uh, the, the, those two things are very closely connected. An artist and a craftsman, you know, just depends on what, you know. But I think part of what you're doing is you're creating something that lives on, like, you know what I mean? But, it like, the time that you've put into it is developing that skill and the the ability and how well you get it done and in all of the things I can't think of all the artistic things that I want to say, but like that's, that's part of what you're paying for because anybody, like, not anybody, but well, technically anybody could order tattoo stuff offline, oh, absolutely. you know, and just give I yourself a tattoo, it. but I you're not, so you're not, time. yeah, you're not paying. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You're, so you're not paying, like, it's not like you're just paying for the design and the ink and the yeah. time. Like you're paying for that person's personal skills Yes, that, that you just can't get from a machine. You can't like, you know, that's, I never, that'd be weird. Do they have like, Oh, they do robotic. Yes, they do. They yeah. do. And, and, but then it loses some of the, well, the, the flavor. You, you can never, I've seen, um, they have like machines, like robots that will tattoo you, but there's, there's just no, um, I don't, I can't think of the word, but there's no substitution for human ingenuity, you know, yeah. like, cause we do a lot of shit on the fly. Like once I'm doing something, if you know, I, I see like, okay, I could do this here. Um, you, you just you do it and not everything is flat so like if it's a right. if it's tattooing you always see the machines but it's always on like a flat surface right but once it starts to go around that needle depth has to be at a specific depth in order for it to actually stay so it for it to go around i mean it it's cool that it's a thing and it's possible i guess like that's cool but it, i'm not ever worried about it taking my job you know what i mean it's come job security is in myself. Right. Like there's a human aspect to that that can never be replaced. Yes, absolutely. You know? and I think, um, and I guess I can connect with that. Cause I think well, it was, yeah, I think it was the very first, when you first started, I made that knife for you. Yeah. Hopefully it's, Oh, I still got it. No, I still got um, it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, like, so I, I understand a little bit like, um, and you know, I've talked about before, like my sister is an artist. She actually drew that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So like you understand like this time and like effort that's put into this thing that like, when you when it's done yeah it's like people see it and they go oh like this isn't just like um you know it got printed off by a machine yep. or if it was just a mass produced whatever you know i i love knives and if, if people ask me if you ever want like a if you want a cheap knife you go get a kershaw if you want a decent knife you get like a benchmade or something like that but yep. there's no substitute for something that's hand made by somebody and hand done it's like oh yeah this is this is my artist 
Yeah. This is a person that did this, you know, and it's <clears throat> something, especially tattoos, you know, something you wear forever. Yeah. Unless you, you know. And I mean, I've got asked to do like commissions and stuff, you know, like that, but it's like, man, you don't, you don't want me to do that. Cause it takes me so long. Like everything that I tattoo, I can draw it, but the amount of time that it would take me to hand draw it. First of all, I would, you know, I'd still have to Photoshop it together to get an idea. I can't, my brain doesn't work that way. Like I can draw some really cool stuff out of my head, but it's easier for me to Photoshop everything together to get an idea of what it's going to look like. And then I could replicate it. Right. Um, but to sit down and to draw something, you know, like I have a bunch of charcoals and stuff that I've done and stuff like that. It just, I don't even do it that much anymore because I know how long it's going to take me to do. Right. And I'm just like, I don't know if I'm ready to, spend nine hours of my life sitting down to do this for just shits and giggles. Like, well, when you have to do it for your job too. Well, when I have to do it for my job, (laughs) it's different because I'm getting paid for it on the spot. (laughs) You know what I mean? Otherwise it's just like, yeah, I don't, I don't mind that at all, but it's, it's a lot different. I think that's like one of the biggest things is people are like, Oh, well my, you know, my cousin is an artist and they'd be awesome at tattooing. And it's like, no, probably not. It's so completely different. I mean, that's like saying that somebody that, is good with a pencil would be an awesome oil painter. Right. Because they're two completely different mediums. And then you have to worry about, you know, all of the, you know, your, the cleanliness and everything that comes with it. Plus people move and they complain (laughs) and like they pass out and like, you know, that's a whole other aspect to it. And it, man, it takes, it just takes time. Like (laughs) it's, did you start with drawing? Is that what? Oh yeah. I I started drawing as as a kid. Like, as soon as I was able to, like, uh, my parents would, my mom would go bowling and stuff. We'd be at, you know, Wayne lanes and I'd just sit, they'd have to take me cause I didn't, you know, whatever. And I'd just give me a, they'd give me a pad of paper and I'd just sit and draw, you know, did that all the time. Don't worry. I don't like bowling either. I actually, I love bowling. (laughs) I, 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 I love bowling, but yeah, no, I was young. Yeah. So how old were you when you were like, you know what? I want to start doing this permanently on sixth people. grade. That was it. You knew it. Sixth yeah. grade. Yeah. Did you well, have like, did you have a lot of people in your family that were attached to no, you? Or did you no, no, not at all. So what <laughs> no. was the impetus of that? Um, my family goes to uh, Garden City, South Carolina, like uh, as like a family trip. Okay. So my grandparents make food for around, well, it's only gotten bigger. If everybody shows up, I think there's like 33 of us. Uh, so they make dinner for us every Sunday and they've been doing that forever, but the numbers obviously just gotten bigger. Um, but we go on trips to like garden city, South Carolina as like a family. And, um, while we were there, the one time on the beach, there was just a dude walking at that time. Like it was very unusual to see somebody that heavily tattooed, but it was just this dude walking by that was, I mean, covered. And I just remember thinking like, what a fucking badass!" Like, <laughs> you know, talking it, what mid, early mid nineties. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then it was kind of, it just kind of just clicked. Like, well, I draw all the time. Like I could, I could draw that. And then, you know, I would just start drawing it and I kept, I kept everything, man. Cause it was literally like, yeah, your teacher going around the, <laughs> I don't want to give it away, but, uh, going around the end of sixth grade, you know, like, what do you guys want to be when you grow up type thing? <laughs> And everybody's like, I want to be a professional basketball player right. and I want to be this. And I said that I wanted to tattoo and she literally like stopped and was like, well, you know, I just don't know if that's the best decision. Maybe look into graphic design. And it was kind of like, well, you just told the, the biggest dude in our class, he could be a professional basketball player. Like, why, why the <laughs> fuck could I not, you know, and I was, I kind of used that as like fuel, but um, I have a bunch of stuff that I kept, you know, seventh grade really started and I was like drawing tattoo designs all the time. And it was all like, super shitty tribal stuff. Cause that's what everybody got in the nineties. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, I have these Everyone's books. That, yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. And then, you know, it was just like all through high school. I just knew that I didn't really have to do anything because I wasn't going to college. Don't need to go to college to tattoo. So it was just like, just get me out of here so I can go do what I want. My parents were trying to talk me into doing graphic design and I'm like, no, like, if you guys, want to waste a bunch of your money to send me to college so I can just get drunk the whole time. I mean, that's on you, but like, I'm, a bunch of yeah, like, I'm just, I'm just yeah, this, like this is what I'm going to do, you know? And then eventually um, they just kind of gave into it. It was just like, not that they were ever really like 
pushing me away for it from it, but they definitely were worried like are we going to have to pay his bills all the time cuz he's going to chase this Peter Pan dream and never, you know, and never be able to like afford his own shit. It's like I'm a, I'm going to move out west and be an actor. Yeah. Like, mm, are yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean even now like neither one of my parents have tattoos and my dad's been a biker his whole life. And it's hilarious like <laughs> he always says he'd get one but he's he's a wuss, he wouldn't do it. <laughs> I, I have great admiration for those people that like just know what yeah. they want to do. I think honestly, that's, that's like the best thing that happened to me is like a lot of people, they just don't know what they want to be. And so they, some people never figure it out. You know what I mean? And I, I just got, I, <laughs> I just got lucky. Like it just clicked one day and I never even, I never made a backup plan. It was never like, okay, if this fails, I'm going to do this. Cause in my head, if I made a backup plan, then like one shit would start to get rough. You'd fall back on it. Yep. So I was like, I'm just not making a backup plan. Like, you know, whatever it takes, this is what you do. And I did it. And, uh, I don't think that's luck, Ryan. Yeah. That doesn't sound like, well, it sound like it luck sounds like determination. It sounds and hard work. like you were just like, I'm, I'm doing it. It's stubbornness is what it is. Yeah. Like I'm, well, I'm stubborn. The last time shit. I, I said that I, this is what I'm, I'm going to be when I grow up was in preschool and I wanted to be an ambulance driver. Hell yeah. I didn't still, want to be, a, I didn't, I didn't want to be like a, you can still do that, babe. Yeah. I didn't want to be right. like a, you know, a medic or any of those fire. And no, I just, I just wanted to drive the ambulance. That's you, it. You could probably pick up that ambulance and run with it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need to drive it. <laughs> that was, that was my plan from here on out. I was like, I'm just going well, no, to the lights and drive. <laughs> I mean, obviously there's a lot of like determination and stuff that comes with it, but I was lucky in a sense that I found it at such a young age yeah. and stuck with it. Like, that's the thing. I mean, you, you can find something and not stick with it, but some people just never even find it. Or if they do find it, it's way later in their life. I just happened to find it really young. And as soon as I graduated, um, I bought this uh, book called the ultimate tattoo Bible, which like, this is old school. So like, you know, nobody would give away secrets at that time. Tattooing has changed so much. But um, at that time I bought this book and I read through it and it's not exactly the, preferred method to tattooing but it that's what i did you know i tattooed a whole bag of grapefruit i still have some of the peels of the grapefruit that i tattooed yeah, that's pretty cool yeah and then i just found the dumbest friends i had and tattooed them like <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty hey, much hey, it i feel like every good tattoo artist starts out with dumb friends yeah yeah they <laughs> or were, at least a couple they of were them definitely they, a, they were definitely on. a blessing for sure what was your first tattoo on skin it was uh, on my dude mike panel shout out mike what's up <laughs> Uh, and it was this really shitty little skull. Uh, it was like this big and I actually like didn't know anything about. So it's backwards. It like faces the back of his arm. It doesn't fit the area or anything, but I thought it was the coolest shit in the world. And he still has it. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, he, he still, has how it, old but... were you? Oh man, I don't even know. It was 2007, probably 2007. Uh, I'm 34. And so you're like at 19, 20, yeah. 18 to 20, or I guess it's probably not 20 or 18 rather. Like yeah. I was, 20. I was, I was probably 18, something like that. That's wild. Yeah. I haven't done anything cool like that. I remember like I used to, uh, I've told her before, like talking about my sister and drawing, you mentioned like drawing as a kid, like everybody wanted to like in sixth grade, you got their drawing and you know, doing all this stuff. And then you realize like, Oh, you see your friends and you're like, Oh Yeah. No, I'm not an artist. That's not me. And then, like, maybe me, maybe this is it. And then you're like, you go out to, you know, what a softball team or whatever. It's like, no, no, that's not it either. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's definitely, I think with art in general, it, it frustrates people because, like, you can see it everywhere. So, like, when you start, you're looking around and you're like looking at what you did. And then you're looking at like that picture behind you and people are like, well, shit, I can't do that. So I yeah. suck. I'm not doing it. Right. You, you have to want it and enjoy it more than anything. Like I liked, I just liked to draw. Like I enjoyed it. It was something for me to do. I could create shit. I could, I don't know. It was like my own little getaway, I guess. So I just did it because like, I, I don't know. I just liked it and then found a way to, make a living off of it i guess yeah, but really? i mean some people they just they do it for a little bit and they're like i suck this sucks i'm done but it's you know have you ever felt like making your passion into your job takes the joy away yeah absolutely so is that something you struggle with 
uh, you still yeah. find the joy in it? Yeah. Well, there's two different sides to it. So I definitely, um, I don't draw for myself like m very, very rarely because I'm constantly doing it for everybody else. And that, that kind of sucks because it did take some of the, um, the love for it out of it that way. But also I just like, I like the act of tattooing and I like being able to create something for somebody. And I ended up finding other ways to love it that I didn't really know that I would like, um, for instance, you know, you, people think about like a tattoo is a tattoo. You get it because somebody wants it and you're like, all right, cool. Thanks. Like I got this. Hell yeah. But you don't think about like what it means to other people when you're covering up C-section scars that they've been like super, you know, um, like self-conscious of. And now all of a sudden they can go out and they can wear a bathing suit again because now their C-section scars, scars covered up and, you know, or people that like lost a loved one and you do a portrait of their kid and then like they're telling you stories about their kid and you're almost crying while you're doing it. You're trying to hold your shit together. Like it's, it gets very moving at times. And like, it's something that I could never, and I never thought that it would be like that, but it was definitely something that like kind of came after the fact that I, I really, really enjoy. And I never, I don't know. I never pictured that as being part of it, you know? But it's it's probably one of the best things about it is like the reaction that you get out of people from it. You know what I mean? No, I totally understand that. I know when I um, I think it's yeah. So for for reference here, this is the first knife that I ever made. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, um, and I remember when I got done with it, I was like, "This is the coolest thing ever." It was like drawing for yourself, right? And then yeah, like, and I got done with it. And I was like, "This is the coolest thing ever." And then years later, I'm like, "Oh." Well, you know, whatever. But then, like, that joy of being able to hand somebody something that they get excited about is really neat. But I don't have the uh, the story aspect of it that you do. I've never really thought about it from your perspective of, you know, all the like, – because a lot of people get tattoos for a lot of different reasons. Yep. Some people get tattoos for no reasons. Yeah. Which is fine, too. You yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and I don't – I don't think I ever necessarily told you – long. I'll do it – make it really, really super short – um, but the, the tattoo that you just finished for me on my back, um, it was basically a it kind of symbolizes like a, a really, really, really rough time in my life that I grew out of or not necessarily, but I fought through. So it's like this castle that's burning from the inside out. Well, it was like one of those things where I kind of had to destroy myself from the inside and kind of walk away from it. So now it's always behind me. Yeah. So like you hear these stories about, you know, like you just mentioned, like being able to do that for somebody, like being able to capture a an inc incredibly important moment or pivotal point in their life and being able to like memorialize that for them or, you know, cover it up or whatever it is like, whew, you know, it's almost like a, a psychologist without ever saying any yeah. words. like that's man. I am. Listen, I'm, I might as well have my psychology degree during all of this. <laughs> some I of can the, only imagine some of the shit people tell you. It's like, well, I was not planning on hearing that, but uh, my, I'm, I'm just there trying not to move the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're like the beauty shop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always explain it to, um, to women, especially like when they come in, they're just like, what the fuck? You know? Cause it's like me, Josh and Chad on the one side and we're just, bunch of hooligans just going at it every day. And it's like, uh, it's like the male version of a hair salon or like a barber shop, you know, like it's just a bunch of dudes basically doing this. We should, we sit and just bullshit all day and color on people. Like that's, I mean, that's, that's what it is, you know, but we, I mean, we all take like, you know, we have like a super, super good group of people. And everybody takes it really seriously. And that's very hard to find. And not only is it hard to find, but it's hard to find a group of people that are all artists that can get along like that. So like a handful of people in that same building. Yeah, place. there's six of us right now. Give a shout out to your company because I've been there four times yeah. for you. And it's so clean and it's so professional. And you guys just really stand out to awesome. the ones that I have been to. Yeah. So I probably have it's like a six super or seven tattoos. Yeah. It is. We, it's fun and it was never uncomfortable. You just walk in 
and it looks clean. It looks professional. You can tell that it's artists, but then you guys are fun and you don't take it too seriously. So give like a shout out and like how long you've been there. Like we know Chad Bueller. He went to school with us, yep. but yeah, like it's- Yeah. So Chad owns a shop. Um, it's Studio Vitruvius Tattoo in Worcester, Ohio. Um, and um, I work with Josh Hellman, uh, Chad Bueller, Chad Voschel, Ed Smith, Ashley Wheeler, and uh, myself. Is that it? Did I forget anybody? I think that's everybody. Pretty sure. <laughs> like, let me think here. We'll, we'll edit it in if you if you remember something right, later. Right. We can put no, it in. That's, I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, how long how long have you? Because you've been there for a while. Because like I said, yeah. I we, I joke I joke with you all the time that like I'm sure you get more people like me than I probably think. But I felt bad because it's we worked on mine for probably at least four years. And it was mostly my fault because I was just terrible at scheduling it and all yeah, those things. Not everybody's schedule works out. And sometimes, you know, especially with women, like I'll start a big piece on them and then they're like, guess what? I'm pregnant. And it's like, well, okay, cool. <laughs> Get a hold of me in nine months or a year or whatever. <laughs> like, and we'll jump back into it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, sometimes it just takes time, you know, and, um, I try to, I try to get a hold of everybody as much as I can, but I'm just so bad at that. Like we were talking about it before we started or whatever. Like I'm not a receptionist or a secretary. I suck at that. <laughs> like I literally am. I just tattoo, you know? So like trying to get back to everybody and keep tabs on everybody's shit. I'll tell them like message me. And they're like, well, I don't want to bother you. And it's like, blow my shit up because if you don't like, I'm not going to like, I just, I get so many messages. If they don't keep messaging me, then I like, I just, who knows what I'm doing and I'll right. read it. And then like, okay, I'm going to get back to them when I have time to get back to them. And then I put my, and then I forget. Right. And then a bunch of messages come in and they get pushed down the list. And then it's just like, well, I messaged you. You never said anything back. And it's like, I'm not trying to ignore you or be a dick. I just, I, I fucking suck. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well now, now you have a scheduler, right? When you, yes. so you open your books, we, I think we talked about right in the beginning. You open yeah. your books like quarterly or something like that. Is that basically every few uh, months or so? You yeah, say, hey, I, I, I try to do six months. I don't I don't like to go much over six months because that's half a year. Like I don't know what I'm doing in October right now, right. but I I do now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, but I mean, if I if I need to schedule something, then I um you know I can hopefully move some stuff around. I think most people and I if I move somebody, I always try to like move them sooner. I don't want to push them back farther because that's kind of a dick move because they've already waited that long. Um, so I try to just be like, Hey, I can't do that day. But if I, and if worse comes to worse, I, I will come in on my days off. I just don't, it's not my favorite thing to do, but I, I mean, it, it you know, anybody's favorite thing yeah. to do. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, you try to, you try to keep everybody happy, but you just can't. Like it's, you're working with so many people and everybody's their own individual. You know what I mean? Some people are really understanding and some people are just like, fuck you. I just like your work. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like I'll take your money too. You know, like like my work. I like your money. That's fine. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's, I can only imagine dealing with that many people and there's, there's everybody because you can only tattoo for so long. Yeah. How? Let me, I'll finish that thought and I'll ask you a question. Okay. So you can only like tattoo for somebody for so long. So if you have a big piece or you have multiple things where it's like, all right, three, four hours here, then it's, you have to wait a month or two. And then like you said, people schedule. Yep. So I can only imagine like how chaotic that can be. Like, yeah. Most of the time, if it's a big piece and they, you know, when they message, um, my, my assistant chick, I just tell them ahead of time, like, well, Hey, like I tell her actually, like if their message, if it's a big piece, tell them it's going to be multiple sessions and try to get them to schedule multiple sessions. So it's not like you're scheduling one appointment for a sleeve. And then I'm not going to see you again after that. Like try to get them to do three or four sessions, you know, spread it out however they want. But that way it's not like, you know, you don't want to take four years to make a sleeve. Like, cause in that four years, who knows how much better I'm going to get. So you, you want to like, I don't want to dumb it down to match up everything that they have. Right. It gets very hard because I constantly try to push myself to be better. So if I tattoo somebody, you know, even like when I was working on your back, it's like when you start it and then you go back into it later, you're looking at it like, why the fuck did I do it like this? Like now I would have done it like this. And it's not like, that's just, that's just, I'm my own worst critic all right. day long. Like, you want the whole thing to be cohesive yes. and for it to flow yes. and everything makes sense. So yeah. and coming from, somebody that has done that 
you don't want to do that. Ske- yeah. <laughs> try to schedule yeah. it all out. It just yeah. makes it much better. And like, cause there was times where I was like, man, like, man, like, I don't like, I want to try to keep it nice because I still got to get this thing finished and I don't want to like damage it. Like before, you know, when we get too much sun on it or all these things and it's still half finished. And it's like, people are like, what's, what is that? I'm like, well, it's going to yeah, be this. <laughs> and like, I felt so bad for so many people. Like, I mean, and what you were getting at before, I think is like uh, how long I can, yeah, how long? Yeah. Like, what's like the long? What I guess, what's the longest session you've ever done? The lo- so and when I when I first started, um, I was kind of just like thrown into the fire at one point. You know, like I started as an apprentice. She fired a bunch of people, and I was like the only artist that was there for a minute. And uh, she's like, "I really need you right now. Like, you need to just step it up." And that's not the way I wanted it to be, but that's just that's the way it had to be. So I was just like, uh, "But I tattooed this one guy." who was leaving out of state like the next day or something like that. Um, so I had to do all of it and it was stained glass around his whole forearm. And I, it was way out of my, what I should have been doing. You know what I mean? Honestly, like, but I was young. I didn't really know my limits at that point. And, um, I mean, the design wasn't something I couldn't do. It was just, I didn't know what my limits were as far as how long I could work. So I tattooed him for nine hours straight. Then I tattooed the next person for three hours. Then I, yeah, yeah. Yes. Listen, then I, then I tried to leave and go home and it was snowing out and I was driving from Orville and, uh, I had to pull over on the side of the road because my brain just didn't work. Like I couldn't see, you're, I mean, you're staring at something for this long and your brain is like, you have all these things going on at the same time. You know, you have to stretch the skin to make sure that the needles are going into the right depth. You have to, um, you know, you have to make sure that you're constantly dipping. You have to, you know, pay attention to all of these different aspects of what you're doing and still do your job as far as like the lines and all of that shit. So it, it, it ta- takes a tax on your brain. And by the time I was done, I just, I had to pull over on the side of the road for like an hour because I just couldn't see my brain. And sometimes even now, like I'll come home and I just sit there and like my girlfriend's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm, I just, yeah, I just, my brain. Everything is just done. Yeah. Don't work. (laughs) (laughs) Like I just need to chill out for a minute and it, yeah. Um, but most of the time now, like, um, like I book one thing a day so I can take my time with it. Um, I don't have to feel like I'm really rushed. And also, I don't like to take a lot of breaks because I know how bad it sucks for the people getting tattooed. If they need a break, I'll take a break. But other than that, I like to just push through because once your endorphins and your adrenaline is going, it's a lot easier to ride that out than to stop and have that go away and then to get that adrenaline back and do it again and then stop again. And like all those breaks, it just makes it so shitty. Sometimes there's a it's nice to have a little break, but I've noticed, I don't know if there's any science behind this. I don't, Tony, you don't have any tattoos, do you, Tone? Oh. He's clean. He's a virgin. Ooh. Um, Ooh, let's do that with the next one. Oh, we could, Tony gets tattooed. Oh. <laughs> no, the, 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 the tat I want would require you reading Blood Meridian several times. <laughs> but I'm I, here I, for it. Yeah, I, I think we should schedule that. We could do like a live. Right. Live, but but I, not <laughs> until November, he's booked. Right, right, yeah, right. Right. It'd be multiple sessions because if I'm going to do it, it's going to be a full sleeve. If you so. do it, do it right. Oh, yeah. we get. We were talking about having the the entire like studio on. Yeah. They all go all back at, the at the same, same time. time and connect it. <laughs> Boom. It'd be a, it'd be a madhouse, honestly. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, I don't even think you guys would be ready for it. You know, like I deal with the shit every day. I'll make sure, so. you know, we, we have an open afternoon. Yeah, oh we, yeah. You would need it for sure. Yeah. Uh, but if you've never gotten a tattoo, I wonder what the, there's some kind of physiological thing that happens because like the first like 10 minutes is like, oh shit. I forgot how bad this hurts. Yep. And I have a, a good amount of a decent amount of ink on me for a normal person. But it's like that first dimension, like, fuck. Yeah. Why do I keep doing this? And then like something happens in your body where it just kind of like, I don't know if it's endorphins and it causes just like this weird, whatever it is. I don't put Tony could probably tell me, I don't know. You, you might be able to know, but like, and then for me, at least it's like after a couple hours, <laughs> like two hours, it's like, okay, I need just a little bit of a breather here. And then, for another hour, I can go about another hour and a half, maybe two after that. And your body's just like 
even the person you haven't i haven't moved i'm just laying there just breathing and it's just your body is just done yeah i feel like i mean i i have been getting tattooed a lot like i'm working on like my whole torso like i just blacked out my one nipple i don't have it anymore (laughs) it's just gone (laughs) like how does that feel oh man it was it was just as shitty as i thought honestly (laughs) but (laughs) like i don't i don't need them whatever (laughs) like my belly button's already solid black so i was like nah it's like a black hole. But I got I got the one side done. I got to go back and get the other one done. But I mean, it is the same thing. It doesn't matter how many tattoos you have. It's always like, as soon as they start, it's like, oh, here this fucking goes again. Like you, you always forget how bad it sucks until like you're in it. Right. And then it's like, okay, this is what you signed up for. Just yes. you yeah. know, find that happy place and shut the fuck up and don't move. Like it just, <laughs> yeah. But um, how many tattoos have you not been able to finish because people are like, nope, I'm what, done. Um. Well, I mean, I won't, I won't let anybody get up and just walk out. Like I have to at least get to a stopping spot because some things I won't be able to re-stencil perfectly to line it up. Right. And then, um, the other thing is I don't want people walking around with a half-assed on tattoo because they bitched out, but then when people see it, they're like, what the fuck is that? And then, like, my name gets brought up. They're like, oh, who did that? Like, oh, Ryan did it. Right. And then it makes me look bad, and it's like, well, they don't tell people that they bitched out. They just make me look like the idiot. So I just cut that out all the way. It's like, no, you can, you're going to sit until I'm in a stopping spot, and then we'll, you know. Like, if it starts to hurt, tell me. I'll get to a stopping spot, and then you can, we'll end it, and you can come back later, and we can redo it. If it starts to hurt, ha, ah, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It started already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I will say I never told, I always made, I always made sure to make it a point that was like, I just haven't rescheduled my appointment yet. It's my fault. Like it's not. It's yeah. Not I mean, I, it's, you know, I don't ever, I don't ever care about that. Like, um, everybody has lives, everybody has stuff going on, you know? So it's, and it's, it almost kind of sounds bad too, for me to like hound people and be like, Hey, you haven't seen you in a while. Bring me your money. Like, I don't, I don't like yeah. to do that shit. And I don't like to hound people. So like, if they want it done, awesome. But I, I, it's rare, you know, I might, I might check in on somebody and be like, Hey, how's, you know, how does that look? Like, uh, tomorrow I got, um, when I go in, there's, uh, this dude, Vern, uh, Vern was the man. It was just this, this dude, um, I, I forget how he found me, somebody at work or something like that. And it's one of those people like, no offense, Vern. I, I love this dude. But like when he first came in, you're looking at him like, what the fuck is he, he doing here? You know? <laughs> and like, it started off as like one tattoo. And then it just, it's like, all right, I want to keep going. And I sleeved out both of his arms and he, I mean, Vern looks like a badass now, but like when he first <laughs> came in, it was just like you, I never would have pictured it to be him to be one of those clients. Right. Um, you know, we, we always gave him a lot of shit at the shop just cause that's how we were, you know, right. big, whole big burn. <laughs> what is something I remember the first time that I got a tattoo, I remember laying down cause it was. Oh, it's such a terrible idea. I got it right on my ribs. And I remember laying there, like looking at this thing as I'm like sweating profusely. Cause I'm like, wow, I, did, I knew it was going to hurt, but not this bad. Oh yeah. And, uh, and it said like, welcome to your new addiction. And I was like, I'm like, people are fucking crazy. Yeah. Like no, th- like, okay, this is cool, but I don't know if I'd ever consider this addiction. And then like the next day it was like, hmm, it's that, that wasn't that bad. It's I that, think I'll go yeah. back. It's <laughs> that thing where you, yeah. you, you see people like, um, like I'm used to it now, but like, you know, you'll tattoo people and like I get up or, you know, whatever. And you'll see them trying to like take a picture of it real quick and like just look at themselves in the mirror. And I'd always tell people like, you'll be walking past a car and just catch a glance of the reflection in the window and stop and like, look, you know, because you're not, you're not used to seeing it. What's that? Yeah. But you're just like, okay, yeah, I like that. And then, yeah, I mean, it is kind of an addiction for people. Um, it's a good People do it for all sorts of reasons, I guess. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it's a it's, you wouldn't think that putting yourself through that kind of pain would be something that you want to do all the time, especially when it's as expens- ex- expensive as it is. Uh, I think I think, it but be, it, sorry, go ahead. No, I mean it's there forever, and I think that's what people like about it. It's yeah. like okay, you know. Well, it's a, it's a sort of, I mean, there's, like you said, there's so many different way, reasons for people to get them. It's whether it's self-expression or 
um, like remembrance, you know, there's a lot of people that get, you know, remembrance tattoos or some people it's just therapy. Yeah. You know, like sometimes like, like true, like good therapy shit's expensive and it's painful. Yeah. Regardless of what kind of physical or emotional pain, whatever it is, but man, sometimes physical pain and going, just putting yourself through some physical pain. Like some people will do, you know, crazy physical workouts and like strenuous things because that's their physical pain that they let enjoy. But I think if there's some, this is some sort of like therapy attached to that. That's just. Yeah. And I mean, some people like, you know, they just, they'll get tattooed. They have such a good experience because it is just us in there bullshitting and talking like idiots. And they'll be like, can we just come in and like hang out and listen to you guys <laughs> talk all the time? We're like, yeah, we don't give a shit. Come in, you know, stay back. You know, don't, yeah. you know, I mean, we get, we're capable of doing our jobs and still talking to other people. So, I mean, uh, most of the people that come in, you know, while I'm tattooing, um, that's how they got their appointment. You know, I'd be tattooing somebody and I'd be like, well, come in and let me see the spot. If it, especially if it's a cover up, I want to see it in person. I want to see what it looks like, right. but I don't have a lot of time and I don't take a lot of breaks. So it's just like, just come into the shop. If I'm working on somebody, chances are that's how they got their appointment too. You know, so come in, I'll take five minutes, whatever, look at it, talk to you real quick, give them a breather. And then we just jump back into it. Yeah. Um, it is nice because I've been there, I mean, almost every single time that I've been there, it's like someone comes in, it's like, okay. Whew. Yeah. All right, I can breathe for a couple seconds. Yeah, because otherwise I'll like, just hammer down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I just, like, yeah. I, I don't, unless they tell me to stop, man, I might, I might stop real quick to eat, but I eat like a starving child because I want to be quick. I don't want to make them wait and, you know, get all their adrenaline gone. So it's like. You you eat like you've never eaten before. And I'm just so used to it. It's really odd, honestly. But a quick break. I don't remember how. I don't remember how. I feel like Cass may have went to you first. I don't know. How did you find out about him? I think I asked for like recommendations on Facebook, and he was like sixty five percent of what everybody said. I that probably was had years ago. I really had six people tell me Ryan nice. Richardson. Yeah. Uh, Jess and um, Jaron are the two that oh, I remember yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know Jess's married name now, but um, yeah, they for sure were like, yeah, go to Ryan. I love yeah. Jaron. Yeah. And I just remember when you came home, I was like, well, that's good work. And then I honestly, I'll say this. I'll, I kind of felt bad once I got fully into the tattoo that I was doing. Cause I'm like, I don't know if this was just like his preferred style. I kind of feel bad for making him do this. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know well, if you felt that way at all, but I was like, man, like, cause now like I've seen, Maybe like you mentioned earlier, yeah. like you grow into what you want to do and like your skill set and everything else. Like I've seen your skill set grow over the last few years. And it's like, you can see where you're really comfortable and really yeah. good. Like at it, mainly, um, I, I never, I never really planned on that either. Like when I draw for tattoos, I draw more like neo-traditional style. Um, but and I did that for a long time, you know, it, but when I started, you had to be able to do whatever walked in the door. Right. You know, I didn't have a clientele. Then I, I literally <laughs> yeah. used to uh, print out like flyers of my work and like, uh, yeah, it was so bad. And, you know, I would like pay my friends like 10 bucks and we would hand them out at the Wayne County fair to people to like get my name out there. And then you're walking around the fair and you see them all over the ground. You see them in the trash and shit. And it's so like degrading. And you're just like, damn, I suck so bad. But like, that's, that's what I had to do. I didn't have any clients. So it was like, you had to promote yourself. Like, like right. it, you know, and, um, do you have somebody, somebody at the shop now that just takes walk-ins? Like, is that how you kind of start? Uh, is everyone established if, if, at if, this point? Yeah, everybody, everybody there's established. But uh, if if there's a walk in and it's small, ninety percent of the time I always throw it to Ed. Uh, he he does a lot of like little walk in stuff, and uh, honestly, if I don't have time to do it, um, he's my my gopher. And he's he's and a, he has a great personality because I have oh I love like Ed. we mentioned yeah. I, I have yeah. a tattoo by him that I was like man I was like I'm about to get that finished because I don't remember when I I got like sort way through and he had to do some different things whatever and he is back now in the area I'm like man I'm to get, get that finished and he's he's a super good natured guy like yeah. I love hanging out with him he's a good guy so like he's, yeah he's fun to get he, tattooed by he helped me out a lot um, 
like when I was first starting, you know what I mean? Like my apprenticeship at the shop, um, that I started at, I'm not going to get into that, but, um, he came in and when he came in, he, the apprenticeship that I had wasn't really shit. Like they weren't really showing me anything. It was pretty much like, you're the bitch, you're going to do this, whatever. And he kind of like showed me what it took, you know, how to build, like re take machines apart and how to, you know, do line work. And like, so frustrating. There were days I wanted to kill him because it would literally be like a, a sheet of flash you take a piece of like transfer paper, like the clear paper put over top of it and you take like a micron, it's like a black pen, basically like a marker. And, uh, you would trace every line on the flash sheet and then you'd give it to him and he'd fucking pull out a pen or a marker and circle every imperfection on it and hand it back to you and be like, go do it again. You're like, what <laughs> this fucking yeah. guy. And you, I mean, you would just keep doing that. And it's like, I'm fucking done with this. Like, give me something else. And he'd be like, no, like you didn't get it right yet. And that, I mean, it, I hated it, but it's little things like that, that really like really helped. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he, for whatever reason, he saw something in me and kind of just, he helped me out more than I could ever, you know, thank him for honestly. Like he's a good dude. Yeah. Well, and you look at it years later, you're, you're doing those things. Like if you cut corners in year one, yeah. What are those cut corners going to look like 15, oh, yeah. 20 years down the road? Yeah. It's like, and then, you know, we had like an opening at the shop and, uh, you know, he came in to visit me, uh, just kind of check on me, you know, see how I was doing. And then, uh, I introduced him to Chad and everybody. And then a couple of weeks later, he's like, Hey fucker, I'm going to be working with you guys. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> yeah. like, all right. And uh, at first I was like, oh, no, like, I know where this is going to go, you know, but uh, no, he's he's really good, man. He's he's it's fun to work with. And he keeps on, you know, he's on the opposite side of the building, mainly because he has the just a fucking shit taste in music and it sucks. (laughs) (laughs) We almost we wanted to kill each other for a while because I'm like, dude, I if I hear one more social distortion song, I swear to God, I'm I'm gonna light your beard on fire, bro. Like I'm just done with it. But now we have the two separate sides and you know, we can listen to our own music on each side and I love the man to death, but I can only listen and this is the thing. I used to love flogging Molly and dropkick Murphy's. Can't listen to him anymore. Because it's just like Yeah. Now you just have Josh talking shit to you about your music all the time. Uh, <laughs> At least have, when I've been there, Josh is like, yeah, what the fuck is this? We have, we have a, a decent, a decently similar taste in music. There's a, there's a couple bands that, you know, we can all get on board with. And some days you just kind of got to bite that bullet. It's like, okay, I feel like I'm in a strip club right now, whatever. But <laughs> you guys been listening to my shit for the last week. Like I'll, this is your day, I guess, you know? <laughs> It's a give and take for sure. Yeah, but what kind of strip club? Is it like the the metal strip club or like the... <laughs> the one, yeah, no. You're, we're talking like uh, the Foxhole. I don't know if you've ever been there, but that's... I've heard about it. Oh, man. They got <laughs> their own metal fold-out chairs. Nice. It's, uh, it's classy. <laughs> Bring your own beer. Hell yeah. Hey, efficiency. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. And yeah. if you can be one thing... Right. Be efficient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... So where what's the uh, the sites moving forward? Do you, you just, just plan on just keep on grinding? Do you have any like big like um because I, I know you do. We've talked about it before. You have a, you do a bunch of shows throughout the year that now yeah. you have to try to schedule in with your everything else. I I I look those up before I even uh, do my schedule. So I look up the shows I want to do and I I mark them off, and then um, if I do them, then they're already marked off, and um. If I don't, then once it gets closer, I just move people into those spots. Um, but yeah, we have, uh, we're doing Cleveland this coming weekend. So we'll be up in Cleveland. Uh, we go up Thursday and then it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and have you ever been to a convention before? I'm not a known. Okay. I haven't. You should come check them out there. It's, it's super cool. So I, I think a lot of people just don't understand like, like what they are, I guess, but it's, uh, it's at the um the Huntington Convention Center in Cleveland and it's basically um a giant open floor and they do it in rows and each booth like our shop will have three booths because it's two person 
two people per booth. Oh, okay. So there's just booths of all these different tattoo shops from all over the United States. Um, and uh, you people, the public comes in, you'll have your banner and your portfolio for people to look at and then uh, kind of bullshit with you a little bit. And if they want to get tattooed, you tattoo them. Or you can set something up ahead of time. And then um, they do like judgings there too. So it's like, um, yeah, so. Oh, she pulled yeah, so oh, that's Cuban the Convention one. Convention Center. Yep. Okay. April 1st or 3rd? Yeah, yeah. Yep. But it, yeah, huh? it's basically just a, a giant convention floor with a shitload of artists from all over the place. And then... Um, it's just everyone's just constantly... You tattoo the whole weekend. Going yeah. the whole time. And then, um, you know, there's a bunch of different categories. So you can, if you do something you like, you can enter it. And then that's how, like, you win the awards and stuff like I that. Gotcha. Is there anything that comes, like... Not to whatever, but is there anything that comes along with those royalties? It's just the, the bragging rights. Pretty much, yeah. That's pretty awesome, though. Yeah, I some mean, some of those events because I know we were. I asked you about those when we were finishing mine up. That like some of them, you have to like get uh, basically it, approved yeah, to get in there yep. or invitation only. Yep. And yep. I know and I've seen you do. Um, I feel like you could do the uh, the Mansfield Reformatory. Like I don't do that one anymore. So you used um, to. I, I used to, I used to do it when it was Ink in the Clink, and then oh, I did right. it the first couple years that it was Incarceration. Um. But fuck that guy, man. He he uh, he he makes it for the artists. Like it's it's a he doesn't tattoo. He doesn't know anything about it. And um, so he's just an event guy. It, it used to be five hundred dollars for us to do that show, and then he took it over, and it was six fifty. And we're like, all right, that's whatever. And then the next year it's eight hundred. Then the oh. next year it's a yeah, thousand, and then this just make a bunch yeah, of money and, and and then this year it's two thousand dollars. So it's like, dude. Why would you, I don't know. It, it's just taking advantage of the artist. And like, he doesn't promote the artists as well as he promotes everything else. Like the one year it, there was all these signs giant that said like t-shirts and food and drinks and all of that, whatever. But there was only one little plastic sign that said tattoos with an arrow. And somebody brought it up to him and was like, yo, that's kind of fucked up. So he went and had a banner made and they hung it up. But he spelled tattoos wrong. Oh, so they went up, I swear to God, they went up with a piece of duct tape and added another T into it. And we oh, were just like, no. dude. Yeah. And that's a bummer too, because most, like, as I an love artist, you're going to have to, like, what are you going to do? You're just going to eat the cost to pick up well, customers? You, you have or you're going to have to pass the cost down to your yeah, customers? Yeah, exactly. And they're like, wait a minute, and why am I paying all when this? You, when you travel and you do those shows, you have to, like, you know, you have to get an Airbnb or, right. you know, a hotel or something like that. And then uh, you got to pay for the cost to get in. You also have to pay for your health apartment fees and all of that other stuff. And so you can I mean, only tattoo so many hours a day. Yeah. So you can only do so much. And I mean, I, I used to love it, man. When it first came around, like we had a solid family, you know, and that's the best thing about doing conventions is like you meet people from other states and stuff like that. You form a bond with them and you might not see them at the next show. You, it might be, you know, some other ones, but like, there's a lot of people that stay on the circuit because it'll go from city to city to city and it just never right. stops, you know, and you just kind of hop on the ones you want to go to. Um, but it's, I don't know. It's cool. Just kicking it. You know, it's like a, a reunion every show you go to. Cause it's like, Oh, I haven't seen you forever, you know, and everybody works their ass off all day. And then at the end of the day, we, we go out at night and then right. you got, I mean, a shitload of people. Like basically any bar that we go to when there's a lot of us, it's like, be prepared because there's about to be a hundred tattooed motherfuckers coming in here. Like right now, like, um, yeah. Is this sons of anarchy or yeah. is this a tattoo convention? No, I'm not it's, sure. It's, it's really cool though. I've, I've met a, a lot of really awesome people through doing it. And, um, yeah. And I mean, we get people that will come guest spot at our shop also because of that, because, you know, we meet the them and they're, yeah. And it's just, it's just networking, you know, right. more than anything. And I use it as um, more of a way like, uh, so it at our shop, I'm the only one that really does the black and gray realism. You know what I mean? Right. So there's not, and it's not that I can't learn things from the other guys because I definitely do, but not necessarily all of it has to do with my line of tattooing. Mm. So when I go to conventions, I can kind of seek out the people that do the same thing that I do, and I can sit and watch them right. and talk to them without me feeling like I'm at a dead end in my shop and I need to go to another one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'll say, I'll 
from experience, I've noticed that where there's been a couple times where, you know, your work, you were working on me and it was like, Hey, Chad, Hey, Josh, what oh, do you yeah. think about this? And like, for a lot of people, you would think like, what does this guy not know what he's doing? But then when you realize, like, you think about the whole art of it and the whole concept of like, cause it seems like Josh does a bunch of color stuff. He does. Yep. So like, well, I, I would want the person that's working on me if they're like, you know what? Uh, I have some, you know, maybe this or that. Let's ask somebody that does this or that thing. Like, hey, yeah. let me get some professional opinion, like, or we, get some, you know, thoughts on this. Like, it just, it makes me, when you think about it, it makes you feel good that this, my artist wants this to be the best it can be. Yeah. So why not phone in a friend? There's definitely, know? there's definitely, we try to keep, especially between us, we try to keep like the egos to a minimum. You know what I mean? Like we know where our strong points are and it's not that I can't do color tattoos, but if somebody comes in and they want a color tattoo, then I know that Josh is going to do it better because that's what he focuses on primarily, especially if it's like a cartoon or anime type piece. Well, then I'm just going to send them to Josh because a, I mean, he's, he's booked out pretty far too, but he's going to be able to get him in you know, sooner. And it's going to be, he's going to be more excited to do it because that's what he does every day. Right. So like the main goal is to just make sure that everybody that comes in, um, they leave with the best piece possible and they have the best experience possible. Right. You know what I mean? It's not, I don't want to just bounce an ego around to get their money knowing that somebody else could have done it better. Like, that's just dumb. That doesn't make sense. Unless somebody is like really specific about it. Like, no, I want you to do it, which I have had, even though I've told him like, you want this American traditional piece. That's literally what Ed does. Like go to Ed. And they're like, I want you to do it. I'm like, well, fuck. Okay. Now I have to, but I'll just ask Ed, you know, like, okay, does this look all right? And he'll be like, no, like, you know, (laughs) and it's like, okay, what do I, you know, what do I need to do? And I mean, sometimes it's, it's not even about like uh, who's going to be better, but we always bounce shit off each other. Like every day, that's a thing. Like, especially if um, I'm doing something on like the center of a back or even the shoulder blade or whatever, I'll, because the person can't see it. Right. So I'll ask them like, Hey, make them stop what they're doing. They turn around and look, I'll be like, does this look center? Does, you know, and they'll tell me like, uh, it needs to come down a little bit. And it's like, fuck. Okay. That's what I thought too. Now I got to, take the stencil off and do it again. But like, it's all in just trying to make sure that we do the best we can. You know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. not like, and I I get that. I thought about that before too. People are like, well, if he's asking him all these questions, maybe I should just be going to this guy. But honestly, it's just because we just want to look at it. I want other people to look at it from different angles. You know what I mean? I can look at the tattoo and be like, this is what I need to do. This is how I would execute it. But get, you give me, Josh, you give everybody at our shop the exact same tattoo. We will all approach it differently right. because we're all artists in our own ways. And it's just, that's just what you do. Like everybody kind of has their own way to do it uh, to get the end goal. But sometimes bouncing ideas off of each other is, it's just going to benefit you and your canvas. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think just life in general, people in general. Like yeah. If whatever profession you're in or whatever it is, like, hey, hey, what do you think about this? Like, you get to a spot, you're like, hey, what do you think about this? And they're like, ah, uh, well, I think this. Sometimes it's, well, that's a stupid fucking opinion. No, yeah. you're wrong. And sometimes it's, oh, shit, I didn't think about that before. And if you can look at it through that lens of we're trying to provide you the best product that we can get you. And that, it, I, very, I very quickly came to that conclusion when I was there. Yeah. It was, it wasn't that, you know, you didn't know what you're, know what you're doing. It was, Hey, we have a, a whole room full of artists here. Well, what do you think you're going to get a better outcome with one person doing their best? Of course, like they're going to do their best, but if you have somebody else go, Hey, what about this? What about this? What about that? And you go, yeah, good call. I didn't think about that before. Like let's, yeah, yeah. Let's change it. Especially you mentioned, you know, if you, if the person that, that's getting the tattoo can't see it, even though like their opinion for the most part, at least talking to myself matters very little because it's like, you're the professional, but it's like, if I can't see it, I'm like, I don't know. Well, like there are, you asked me to look at the center of my, the back, my back. Like yeah. I can barely wash it. I can take, a, yeah, I, can, I can take a picture <laughs> of it and show it to you. But yeah, I mean, there have been plenty of times that I'm like, I'll say something to, I'll ask them and they'll, they'll give me their advice. And I'm like, yeah, no, fuck you. That's wrong. Uh, <laughs> but you know, there's been plenty of times like, uh, my dude Cameron. So I did this, uh, awesome, you know, sleeve on him and I was doing this jellyfish on the back of his arm 
And uh, I was only going to make it so big, you know. And I like held it up and I was like, hey, what do you guys think about this? And they're looking at it and Josh just instantly is like, go bigger. I'm like, Fuck, all right. So I make it bigger and, he, and I hold it up again. And he's like, bigger. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, and he just kept saying bigger. So I ended up doing this giant fucking jellyfish on the back of his arm. And he was right. It looks baller as fuck being bigger. And, you know, it's just one of those things that you can't, you just, sometimes you just got to, you know, eat it and listen to people. Like, that's what they're there for, you know, like, yes. Stand 20 feet away from it and look at it. Yeah. And that's what we do. That's the, that's one of the main things is like, Go stand over there. Turn your back to me. And I'll stand back and look at it. And it's like, okay, now I'm going to move it here and then right. we'll do it again. I mean, I've sat for an hour and a half just stenciling somebody, especially if it's two things that are like mirrored. You already have the one side and you got to do the other side to oh, match it. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what you got to do, though, that's what you got to do. You just did one this week or posted one this week. That yeah. You said it was the back of the shoulders. Yep. It was, it was the roses. Yeah. And you were like, this is badass. So, oh, yeah. So yeah. that was. That was cool. Yeah. Tony, a drink break. What you, what, you got, what you got going on here, Tony? Oh, I brought that for you to try. It's uh, aged in great brandy barrels. Ooh. I know you like that stuff that's aged in sweet. Ooh. Yeah. I don't like the sweet, but I like it when it's aged in the sweet. I'm trying to. Ah, you like the sweet. I don't know about that. But yeah, so the. the was it what, what, what exactly i can't i remember so saying seeing it's, it, and, it yeah, yeah find it. it's uh it. it's it's my sister-in-law actually and uh she had three tattoos on her back and um they were all really tiny and uh we're covering them all up okay um Cover, that's a i, I want to ask some questions about covering up too because that's a whole fascinating yeah thing. But, so so there's uh so both sides are cover-ups uh, I just saw it. Um, Are they, they at, cover up the same similar thing or very different things? They're they're two like angels. They were tiny. They were pretty faded, um, but you could definitely see them. <laughs> and uh, so I I um was it a an I don't, actual post? I think it was a story. I, yeah. I, I so it, I can I yeah, can I, uh, story. I can here. I'll post it real quick so you can <laughs> put it on your Instagram we're story. Do, we're okay. gonna do it live because I <laughs> so I got real quick. I got to this point where I like. I don't care about the whole fame thing. It takes too long for me to sit and hashtag everything. And it just takes time away from everything. That arm right yeah, there, go, every, go back. Every week it changes too. That jellyfish is the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Like I. No, over, on the. Oh, yeah, yeah. I blew it. I the see what he's talking up. about now. Yeah. It really fits the, the yeah, arm, the contour, and, the muscles. I mean, his, his sleeve is, I, I love that. I mean, it's. Oh, with, was that a, is that Poseidon? Yep. That's in the skull on the other side. That's, that is fucking sweet. Yeah. Yeah. He's a. Uh, he was right on the cool jellyfish. Dude. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, I, um, with, with hers, I, um, Oh yeah, I saw that monkey too, or whatever. Is that gorilla, or is it a monkey? Oh Some yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, chick. gorilla. Like, it, yeah, that that was really well done. The one that he wanted me, I did that all in one session, and I was so tired afterwards. But yeah, that that leg, that's Cameron's leg. Also, that's the same dude. That uh, that skull down at the bottom right corner, that's a cover up. Also, I was saying because I saw that nope, no the over. leg. Yep. Yeah, that's a big piece. Yeah, yeah, up at the top left where all of the black uh, leaves are. Yep. That was a heart with a clover and some initials. Oh. But once you add all the other black leaves around it, you just, you, uh, and then everything is light in the center. It takes your eye away from yeah. it. Yeah. Those roses and the skull are, I'm assuming the skull was the, the last finish piece. Is that was, yes. Yeah. 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 So the, 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 yeah. The rose and the, uh, the bottom rose and the skull I did, uh, that day. Yeah. Those roses are fucking sweet. Yeah. Some, I, I'll say that the work you've been doing, I mean, all the work you've done is great, but the work you've been doing recently is it looks like in the last year or two, it, something happened and it just shot up another that's, couple. That's what happens, man. It's literally like, I don't even know how to explain it. You can learn one tiny technique and it's just such a game changer that you, I mean, you don't even, I don't even know how to explain it. It could be something so minuscule and like, but boom, there it is. And something right. just clicks and you're like, Oh shit. There's yeah. another texture that I can use. And that's what it is. It's always just trying to build textures on things like that bear has a, a shitload of textures. Yeah. 
Um, so there it is, it looks, fresh. It just looks so soft. <laughs> you yeah, pet it. that's super awesome. Now, I, 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 I think I can understand. I kind of understand what you're saying. From, I think anybody that can that creates something from scratch, um, that you can always improve on, kind of gets what you're saying. But there's something about just for anybody out, like whatever it is, if you just keep on just a little bit baby steps, even if it's, you know, two steps forward, one step back, just baby steps. Eventually you're going to look back after a year or two years and go, Holy shit. I baby stepped my whole way here. Like being able to, that was Cleveland. last. That was Cleveland last year. I guess you got, um, I won Chad. Yep. That's yep. Voshel. Chad Voshel and Josh and, and me and Josh and, and Ed. Ed. Yeah. I won nine awards. I think Jeez. Voshel won two. Josh won 10. And I think Ed won four, maybe. That's a whole slew of awards you got going. Yeah. On we took, we cleaned house that year. It was, <laughs> and it was, it was my birthday weekend too. So it was like us going out and putting it on and then coming back <laughs> like, we're going to go out tonight, but when we show up tomorrow, we're fucking handling business. Like, yeah. bring your fucking A game. This is Cleveland. Yeah. This Hydrate is like when you get back to the our, hotel. You know, it's like our, <laughs> our home territory. That's like, awesome. yeah. You got to represent. Yeah, man. You got to try to at least. Like, yeah. Do your best. That's especially awesome. on your birthday weekend. I was like, don't be fucking around. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. That's awesome. Yeah, I posted that. I don't know if it. Oh, there's my foot in Hawaii. Look at that oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. What did you get? Some coral? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I was like, is that yeah. a tattoo? That's fucking realistic. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> oh, no. That's, yeah, you yeah, scraped you open good there. Backflipped off a pier and landed on coral and it. Whoo, I've heard that shit's nothing to It was with. not fun, that's for sure. Man. <laughs> God, it was so terrible. Oh. Is it man. not popping up? Did you post it on your story? Uh, I thought I put it on my feed. Uh, oh, on your. Do you uh? Oh, you don't have service. You might. You might yeah, have I probably. I probably don't have service. We can. Uh, let's. Let's. Uh. How, what's oh wait, it's there now. You got it. It's on. Yeah, it should be on. It should be on both. Oh, there's the. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So with this, it's a little different. So the, the one rose had to be a little bit higher because when they put the original tattoos on her back, one was higher. Oh, and man. so it wasn't level, but I wanted to try to make the rest of it pretty symmetrical. And then the, the one in the middle, I'll end up covering that up too. Gotcha. Um, so the one rose is definitely going to be higher than the other one. I had to add a little bit more of the, the lacy stuff in there, but um, yeah. So if you're not, if you're just listening to this, it's like a design. It's basically a, uh, I don't even know what you call that. It's like a rose type. with like lace. Yeah. I so guess. it's like a lace behind it. And the, all like the lace and design of the, like the background image is fairly close to being symmetrical and the exact same, but then the roses are in different spots. And it's, it's really nice because it, you, you're right. Like the roses are in different spots, but like the designs that are behind it are all symmetrical. Yeah. So it, it makes it seem like, this is what we were going for. Yeah. Like and I, I didn't, I didn't even like the little, um, the little dangly shit at the bottom. I, I tried. What do I, they call that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the little dangly shit. I don't know. <laughs> it's like a little dangly fancy uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I tried to make that not the same as the other one, just so it kind of, I mean, it's, it's got definite similarities, but that way it wasn't, perfectly symmetrical right you know what yeah, I mean? you don't want like, it exactly the same just enough to make your brain yeah so you didn't do this one you just did the new one no i did the other one okay, too I was gonna say, it I, looks yeah i did i did that one first and it was a cover-up um i just find that stuff yeah. fascinating i can never see myself yeah i just like, I, I, never... I just saw it last night uh almost healed because she was at dinner for a second um yeah, it's looking yeah, good. That's, that's a whole different ballgame, the cover up thing. Like yeah. how, how, what, where was the cover up required? Um, basically, right in the center of that rose. I was going to say, he did such a good job, he doesn't even remember. <laughs> like, because you can't tell. Like, there's no, like, that's, that's, I guess that's a fascinating thing about like a good cover up is like, oh, where, like, oh, I got this covered up. Like, what? You did? It's... And like, and if it's like, if someone just like blacked their whole arm out, like, well, yeah, the, yeah, the, just, the <laughs> trick I I post so many things that are cover ups and I just don't even say anything because like when you do, then everybody's like, I have this covered up and it's like, I they, you know, they want it and I'm just not trying to fuck with it all the time. I can imagine that's a whole different. It like, is. And I, I, from I, an artist's I, point, I, like, I enjoy them. 
Uh, that it... was go up real quick, right there. The Indian, uh, yes. So this was, I believe, they were sisters. That was. I pointed this out to Fred too, and was like, "This is yeah. badass." That was. Yeah, y'all are gonna crazy. have to watch this section on YouTube, or maybe I'll try, I'll try to post this as a clip yeah. on YouTube, so it's not three hours long, so oh, we don't yeah. have to dig through it. But yeah, that was crazy difficult because, like, I designed it for them, but it's you're doing a portrait twice, <laughs> like. You do one and it's like, all right, boom, done. But then to have to do the exact same one again, you're like, okay. And I think there was like two weeks difference in them, uh, which that's why the one on the right looks more healed. Right, and then the one on the left is yeah. fresh, but it was just, and they're, you know, they're different sizes. It was just, it was tricky. I, bet. Like, I mean, I, you know, you're like, there were times where I'm like, because she's sitting there with her. I'm like, all right, let me see your arm real quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the. I need to get a. I need to get a look at this. See how I did that. Well, it goes back to anybody that's doing something from scratch as a like craftsman, as we talked about. You know, it's trying to replicate something from scratch is is not easy, especially when it's you're doing it with your all you have is your own two hands. That's that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Like anybody that can create something like that. Like if you have a machine, if you have templates, like in you, it's a simple design, then great. But if you're trying to create something complex from scratch and do it twice identically, fucking forget about yeah, it. Like rough. there's gonna be there's gonna be some differences there. Yeah, and I think honestly to me that lends to the uh, I don't know just the uniqueness of every single piece you do. Is the uh, is cover like so? Why do you enjoy the the cover up? Is it, is it additional oh, challenge or yeah. is it the art piece of it? Like, how yeah, I I I enjoy the challenge of it. And um, a lot of people when they do cover ups, you can tell it's a cover up because they just try to throw something dark over top of it. Right. But then you can tell it's a cover up. I like doing them in ways that uh, I basically it's a, it's a mind trick. I trick your brain into seeing something else. Right. And that, that's what makes a good cover up. A good magician. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, man. It's slight, it's yeah. slight of hand. You just, you know, if I'm going to, if I got to cover something up, all right. So that, uh, right there, the Viking looking warrior dude on the right over. Oh, I see over. With, the, with the armor on right there. Yep. So that's that dude Vern I was talking about. This is a cover up that's also. A badass piece. So there was uh he had an, he uh, was in the military and he had an eagle under. I think he was in the military. I'm pretty sure. I hope I'm not fucking that up. Uh, but he has a uh, he had an eagle under it, and I just found ways to put that directly over uh, top of it. How big was it compared? So what you're looking at here, there's a it's a right arm of of it looks like a, either it looks like a fairly large gentleman. Oh yeah. It has a, it's a basically like a guy. It's kind of like a medieval Viking, like Viking, something? I don't like know, like with a little bit of a, I don't know, um, like he's like the new creation from Game of Thrones. Yeah, that guy's yeah. Name? Uh, I'm trying to remember, the, like the mountain when they, yeah, yeah, and the guy like worked on him. Yeah, the mad yeah he's just, just a giant rip guy or... yeah. with an axe yeah. and like this armor on with like a bunch of like background stuff going on. Just the detail and and everything is just where. So how big was was the eagle compared to um, that? And where was it at? Because I can't even. It was I I hit it under all of his uh, where his belt and everything is. No shit. Yeah, because there's so much stuff going. If you look, if you want to see it. Uh, and I, I'll point this out because I see it. And it bothers me. But uh, if you look at the knife that's hanging on his belt, okay, you can see it in the blade. That little yep. the shimmer. In yep, it? yep. That's uh, where that's where part of it was. But it I just looks I, like a shimmer. Well, I designed everything around it, and I use the shapes of what's already there. I'll recycle some of those lines right. that are there from the existing tattoo. I try to, to make it. it yeah. So once I see it, I'll I'll. Uh, I'll see different shapes and it's like, okay, now I can use that shape to this advantage. And that's why I, you know, that's one a of the whole reasons, different art on its own. Yeah. Oh, it is that's for fucking sure. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy doing cover ups to a point. They can be a, a just a giant pain in the ass, Daunting. but yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Hold on. Was there a picture up there? A chick bent over and it was under the butt cheek said pitter patter. Oh, <laughs> yeah, pitter patter. Thought yeah. I saw that. Let's get that was, that, Thought I saw that. That was uh, that was actually my uh, baby mama. <laughs> pitter patter. Yeah, I did that. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I did that a while ago. <laughs> That's so <good>. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we gotta get this on. Yeah. That's awesome. Pitter patter. Let's get out of here. Oh man. 
Yeah, I don't know. There's just something about like when people can do something to that extent that I just I, I can't that I can't grasp. Like that's like people doing impressive things is always impressive regardless. But when it's something in, like that I find that like I'm like I don't know. I can't. I would never even like I'm I'm beyond the point in my life that I would need to figure out how to do that. I feel like where it's like I'm that I couldn't do that. There's I'm just beyond the point where it's like and it's just fascinating to be able to to do some of that stuff that like cuz even drawing because like, there's a lot of people that could draw that stuff. But it's a I feel like it is. It's, it's a whole, a different whole to put it into a living creature. There are so many different needle groupings too, which I think people are always like, this is one of the number one things that people mistake when you get tattooed. So very rarely are you ever tattooed with one single needle. It's like very, is it, all, is it just thickness? Is it depth? Is it like the, how, like how, like how it all works? I have no idea how okay. any of that shit works. That, oh, that, that is okay. a beautiful so I have, natty ice How many needles would you light. use for this natty light? I, I use, <laughs> I, I use, I use three different needle groupings, but the funny story about this is, uh, this is, uh, one of my regular clients, his name's Josh. And, uh, <laughs> did he lose a bet? So his, his, <laughs> his requested, I don't want to call him out, but like his, uh, his, his mom came in to pay his deposit. <laughs> okay. And uh because she worked for work, the natural she, light she works in the area, you know. <laughs> okay. So she's dropping off the money and I was like, So uh how do you feel about this tattoo that Josh is about to get? And she's like, Honestly, I'm not really a big fan of skulls. And I was like, <laughs> uh, <all right. laughs> And then like, you know, like she leaves and I messaged him, I was like, yo, dude, uh we're still tattooing this natty light can on your ass, right? And he's like, "Oh yeah, definitely." Wait, it's his ass cheek. Yeah, I that's his. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I. Oh, that's why the, the yeah, color on yeah, the side. Yeah, yeah. For the yeah. for the grams. Oh, because that's his crack. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just I was doing the world a favor there. That was just me being a nice guy. That's awesome. But yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was like, We're, are we still here? He's like, oh, yeah, dude, definitely. He's like, I just didn't want to tell my mom I was getting a Natty Light can on my ass. I was like, all right, dude, that's fair. So when she asks to see a skull, she's actually yes, like, chickened what? out. I didn't do it. Well, once it's there, it's there. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, she he, can't. He, I don't know. That's <laughs> don't, that's between that's between them at that point, man. I, I don't, you know. That's fantastic. Oh, there's mine. Yeah, there's your arm. Oh, yeah. Great tits. I remember that conversation. You were like, how big of a rack do you want her to have? And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah big Make enough her to stacked count. for sure. Yeah, let's bust these girls count. out. Yeah. Make her <laughs> right. stacked. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was uh, like a cover up because I had just, yep. the oh, first right. time yep. I came in, I was yep. like, it can't go below yep. my oh, scrubs. Oh my God, story of my life. And then I came back <laughs> in and you were like, so we're taking it to your elbow. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Jaron did the same thing to me. Yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> What's the if you had like a, a that copy. that eagle right there? Look, we were talking about how you ask your friends and everything. Um, so there's a lot of blood coming oh. through it. But uh I drew that motherfucking eagle a million times. And every time the guys were like, Nope, this doesn't look right, this doesn't look right, this doesn't look right. And I'm I Drawing birds is not my thing. I hate drawing the anatomy of birds. They don't make sense to me. They're weird creatures. They they are. They're awesome creatures. Yeah. Like uh They're definitely different. Yeah. Peregrine falcon, top speed. It's like the fastest animal yeah, in the world. Wild. 240 miles per hour yeah, to dive. What? Get the fuck out of here. What? It's insane. It's not... But yeah, I, I had to redraw that like a million times before finally they were like, All right, that looks okay. I'm like <laughs> Does it look okay or is it like tattooable? Yeah, right. You know, but yeah. Well, that's some good friends then, to be yeah, honest with yeah, you. Yeah. And they are. <laughs> they are to a, <laughs> to a fault. <laughs> like, you know. I saw a, um, speaking of birds, completely off topic, but why have you ever seen a, uh, like bird swoop down, like attack something? Oh, yeah. I saw it was, uh, I don't know, it was fairly recently. And, well, uh, it doesn't matter. But like standing in a parking lot talking to somebody. And there's just some birds like playing in a puddle, like, you know, you know, getting their drinks, whatever. All of a sudden this hawk out of nowhere, just foof, like, what do we just want? Like, it was like 10 feet away from us. Like, well, did that just happen? Like, I don't know. It's gone. Like they're crazy yeah. creatures. Yeah. I was at my, I was uh, leaving my grandma's at that 
uh, dinner the one night and right on the side of the one hill, it's like right by shell and, uh, yeah, shell and park. And, uh, on the one hill, there was this, uh, hawk that was, um, fighting a goose and it like had carried the goose. A goose? Yeah. Like a Canadian. Like a Canada like, goose? Like a, yes. Yeah. You know, like Canada goose. Like it was, <laughs> it was crazy. So it like carried it and then realized that it couldn't carry it because it was too heavy oh. so <laughs> it, it, it marinated on it for a while yeah like, so I can't so like it. i saw it and i was like what the fuck is that because you just see feathers and wings and i was yeah. like so i pulled my car over and then there was another car that stopped too and it was me and this other dude just watching it happen and he's mm-hmm. like do we stop it and i was like no for, like yeah, i mean that's that's just that's that's what it is yeah. bro like the, uh nature is metal page oh yeah okay oh gonna... <laughs> man one wow. of the great i have there's like three other ones that i follow that are similar to that yeah Love them. Yeah, I, I saw love that. I saw a video. I think it was yesterday or today of a. Uh, I don't remember if it was a cheetah or like a female lion or something like that. I don't know if it was a lion because it was climbing a tree, but it had like that an antelope or something like that that was bigger than it, and it was climbing a tree saw with it. it in its mouth. And I'm yeah. like, probably a leopard. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember if it had spot, but whatever it was, yeah. it was just like I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, yeah it's if, carrying it up the tree. Yeah, and it was yeah. like bigger. Like it's oh, like yeah. trying to like figure out how to get its like its legs around this body to carry it up the tree, and it's like this is just crazy. I don't like if we uh, if we didn't have the intelligence as a human species that we do, like we'd be up. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that? Isn't that why they say when you go out at night sometimes, like maybe there's that built-in instinct of from way back in the day you can't see shit and big cats can yeah. and so you always kind of have that slight trepidation of like oh it's dark yeah, like, it's i like better kid, be on my guard yeah a kid going down in the basement it's no it's dark down there like there's monsters there because <laughs> there's been monsters trying to eat us for the last millennia like, speaking of nature ryan don't you have like another um passion of sorts yeah. you like collect are they insects? Like, what so, are these things? Okay, so Moths I almost, I'm going I'm, to, if I'm going to, if you guys will have you me, I'll, I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to bring you one. I yeah. have, I have a, uh, a pig heart that I preserved. A pig heart? Yeah. And pig hearts are the, uh, they're the closest heart to like a human heart, like right. in size and everything. Um, but I have two of them that I preserve. I actually preserve three of them. One of them is at Meatheads. Cause I gave it to Adam. Cause that's okay. where I got the pig heart in the first place. Okay. And, uh, I kept one at my house. I have like a museum room in my house where it's just like all the weird oddities shit that I've collected. And like, I'll find like weird bugs and, or people will give me weird bugs. It's a weird thing. And then like, I pin them out. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. So basically what happened was like, because I lost part of that drive as like an artist, uh, as far as like drawing all the time, right. I needed another outlet and I used to rollerblade. Like that was my thing, but I couldn't do it anymore because now you're falling on your wrists and you break, like, you break yeah, your wrist, you're screwed. Yeah. So <laughs> it was to pay like, the bills with a broken wrist, right. right. Um, so I started getting into, um, different, not, not necessarily taxidermy because I don't, and for the record, I don't kill anything. Like I, I, you know, I'm not against anybody that does obviously. Um, but me personally, like I'm, I don't hunt, I don't, you know, but people will give me things that are dead and, uh, I do miscellaneous things with them and I try to use all of it that I can. So, um, what is it about that that you think that you are attracted to? It's just an, another art form, gotcha. especially with like the bugs. So I started, um, this girl came into the tattoo shop and, uh, she had, I had seen on her Snapchat that she had like a, a whole jar of praying mantises. Cause they had just hatched like out of their Uthaca oh, and I was like, what Uthaca? It's like an egg sack. Okay. And I was like, I damn, yeah. I was like, damn, that's like really cool. Can I have some? And she's like, well, <laughs> can I? <laughs> my, uh, we're going to release them into the garden, but my husband wants a logo done for his business. So would you want to do a logo for his business? And then I'll trade you. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I just want, the manises, you know, yeah. so she gave me uh, 14 of them and I had no fucking clue what I was doing. So it's like a lot of research and trying to, you know, and um, so I raised, uh, I ended up having four of them that reached like their full lifespan, which is like a little over a year, okay. about, about a year. Those are wild looking creatures. Too. Oh, they're so fascinating though. Did you speak real quick? Did you see, I think I saw a video or, a, or an article or something just recently that it was a, uh, a praying mass that caught a hummingbird. Oh Yeah. 
He's oh, like, dude. I was like, I didn't know they, that they were yeah, that they, like, they, 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 they kill They kill snakes. Yeah. Mice, but like uh, hummingbirds, you think like they're so fast, yeah. Like and they come, and they just sit there, yeah. And and uh, that was one of the coolest things about it is like, you know, when you feed them, you get to like, and they all. It sounds weird, but they all have like their own personalities. Like, um, it sounds it sounds weird, but because it's a bug, but like they're not, you know, like, and they they're very smart. Like they'll sit and they just wait. And then when something comes by, they snatch it up, but instantly they'll, they spin it around and they would always saw the head off and then they just eat it down. Especially if it's like a cricket, they would saw the head off and eat all the way down and they would have the big legs in their hands so that they it couldn't jump and try to get away from it. It would hold the legs. That's it would eat all the way down to the legs. And once it got to the bottom of it, it would just rip the legs apart and drop them because there's no nutritional value in the legs because they're like harder and right. bigger. There's nothing there. So you would just like see two little legs in the bottom and that's, it'd be what like, yeah, fuck it. Ate it. They ate everything. Okay. That's yeah. probably the most nutritious part. I was yeah. going to say, so yeah. that's, yeah. So, cause they look like, do they saw it off with like their, like their, whatever arms or whatever? No, it, their, their when, mouth. Oh, they just, oh, just, they just yeah. eat the way through. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. I've never, I've never, Dude, go, I've never dived were, into. They were so cool. And then, uh, so once, once I got, uh, once those died, um, I bought some ghost mantises off the internet. Uh, cause What's you a can, ghost, is it, are they similar, similar like family or they're, um, With the man, man day family. They're, they're like, uh, they look like dead leaves almost. And they, oh, okay. they like originate in Madagascar. Okay? okay. I think I'm pretty sure that's the only place they actually live. Like naturally. Yeah. 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 It goes, oh, yeah. It looks like it looks like a little clump of leaves yep. or like uh and like maybe one of those like maple helicopters. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they're they're super cool though. Look at that head though. Yeah. That's fucking weird. And uh those were the same way. So I raised those and I was actually trying to breed them. Um and I bought six of them thinking that you know, a couple of them would die and they didn't. <laughs> so I was like, and then I was like, well, and I always name them, you yeah. know, and like, cause you, I mean, how you, you, how you tell them apart. Is well, it like, I would put them, just... I put them, these ones you could actually keep in the same enclosures. Cause they're, they don't want to, as long as Eat you keep each other. them, as long as you kept them fed, they're not like, they're not really like that. Um, oh, they're pretty small. Are they, is that? Yeah. Like, they're, they're, they're smaller. Really small? they're, well, that's a, that's a baby one, but okay. they, they would only, they're not nearly as big as the normal ones you would see outside. Like okay. the ones you see outside are either, um, they're Chinese manises or Carolina manises. I didn't know so there are so many different types of manises. Th there are. Yeah, okay. I mean, it make sense, but. You ever hear that thing where people say that praying manises are endangered? You ever yeah. hear that? Okay, that as is a, as a kid, it was yeah. always like, well, you like if you come you can, across you a pink man, it's like, oh my to, god, yeah, you can go There's to jail if you kill left. it. Yeah. yeah, no, it's bullshit. Same thing with like bald eagles nowadays. Yeah, like, what do they really need to be on the protected list? I see them uh, from, from my house. So, you know. Yeah, um, but yeah, those ones only get they don't get that big. They probably get like maybe three inches in length. Okay. Um, how big does like a what's like the big biggest? Oh, there's so many. Are they, are yeah, there's one. It's called a devil mantis. Uh, look that up. It's they. Huge. They look like fucking Pokemon, bro. Like they. they <laughs> I swear they don't even look real. They're just like, but they're very hard to take care of. You have to have like, you have to have such. Um, oh Jesus! Those things they do. They look yeah. like a Pokemon. And when and when you see it what? on somebody's hand, look at that. Uh, that top. Uh, I guess. Oh middle yeah, the middle one on the top. Oh no, over. Right. Yeah. Look at that. What see is how that big thing? that is? Like, that's an alien. Those are gnarly. That's an alien species. Yeah. yeah. Aliens are real. And yeah. And, and they're called and devil giant mantis. devil flower mantises. So, yeah. I mean, that's honestly where a lot of the, like some of the sci-fi. So I took a pretty cool entomology class back in the day. And I remember the professor wrote the book and he was a fairly knowledgeable dude. And he said a lot of the sci-fi stuff comes from the world of entomology where they lay the eggs and they hatch inside and eat their way through and it's yeah. pulled out. And well, I think a lot of, for me also, my, um, my aunt and uncle, uh, my aunt's dad, uh, we just call him grandpa dude. He, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was an awesome guy. You'd and, have to be with that. And he, name. he, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the OERDC that he worked, but he was an entomologist and it was like, as a child, you know, you could find bugs and you could ask him anything and he would just full of information it was just like get the fuck out of here how do you know yeah, this like yeah because you're every time you're a kid you're finding bugs and you're just like this is a new species yeah, nobody's ever sure. nobody's no. literally nobody's <laughs> yeah, ever seen this, this before this <laughs> yeah 
Uh, but I don't know. I just always thought they were cool. I mean, like there's definitely some, some bugs that I'm not like cool with, but, uh, no. yeah. you know, which like spider, are you, are, I guess no, spider, spiders don't bother me at all. But have it's, you seen that new one that's coming? Yeah. yeah. That was that. that are, you, are you concerned about that? No, one? not at all. No, no. I don't know. It sounded kind of concerning. Have you heard about that one, Tone? They're uh, they're it's... not they're not poisonous to people like that. Like no. they they make it sound like they're like going to fly in and just eat you and you're going to die. No, but it's but a it's, giant. They are big, yeah. Because I think that's like the big. That would be like the biggest spider on the North American uh, continent. They wouldn't it? they look like orb weavers, um, like the garden spiders that are like yellow. No. Oh, those yellow yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they bigger though? Because I thought they were like. Because they think, said it was bigger than that. I think they're. Maybe I read it wrong. I thought they were about the same size, but I mean, even those ones are big. But I mean, the ones that you you know the ones I'm talking about, like they're harmless too. Yeah. They're just more like scare tactics because we've seen movies about them and shit. Yeah. Well, I remember having nightmares. Watch, have you ever watched Arachnophobia? Eight, oh yeah, or Eight when Legged I, Freaks. Yeah, you when know I was a mean? kid, Arachnophobia. I didn't shower for a fucking like month after that because <laughs> like it dropped off of the shower head oh. and like or like in the popcorn. Po- you want some popcorn? Fuck no, yeah. I don't want some popcorn. I'm gonna die from this giant spider that eat me. Like no thanks, Cass. If you scroll down on there, I might have a video of me pinning one of these out so one of my manuses when it is this facebook or instagram this is instagram okay I keep, have facebook okay keep going down um one of my manuses when they so i would raise them and then once they would right there that white yep so once they would die oh um hmm. i would soak them in alcohol to make sure that all the bacteria and everything was dead and i then, was wondering how do you preserve like because there has to be some kind of yeah. preservation fluid or something that... and i'm not a professional at this by any means so don't give me shit for it but no, it's uh, like building a model with uh you know you know, like... and you know i got showed how to do this um by actually an ex-girlfriend but you you don't actually put the needles through anything it just goes under the arm to hold it in place it stabilizes against yeah it. and then you just leave them like that and then like they harden and then oh. once you take everything out they stay they stay like that so okay. then i take those and then i uh get like a display case and right. put a background in so it i think you then... have don't you have one in the shop on that side case or yeah that's a one? that's a bat that i did okay the bat that was, that's right. yeah, yeah 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 that was like the first one okay i had no idea what i was doing but hey, i was just like yeah, wanted to try it. somewhere that's uh, super interesting yeah my um the mother of my child, her grandpa hit it with a shoe outside of our house and killed it and threw oh, it outside man. in the snow. And I came home and was like, is it still out there? He's like, yeah. I was like, All right. <laughs> Let me warm that baby up. Yeah. <laughs> Good movie. No, no, those are just um, bones are just that I, yeah, those are just bat bones. I don't even remember how I got those. Yeah. yeah Cause I remember I looked, I, I saw that last time I was in right. Uh, just to the left of the desk there, that side case. You yeah. Know, sitting in there. Yep. Well, I think I know what I, uh, they're creepy, like insects and bugs and spiders. Like, sure, they're creepy looking just because they're so entirely different. Oh like, yeah. W- when you really think about, it, you break it down. Like they're just, they're just out there doing their thing, trying to survive. And and if you like, look at uh, like the deep oceans, like some of the shit that lives out oh, there, it's insane. Like, it gets way weirder. Yeah. Like it's 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 a neat uh, perspective to be able to look at something like that. Most people are like. Oh, gross, whatever. And then be able to enjoy like the beauty of this crazy different creation. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. I just started out small, you know, and then like, um, just kept adding. I mean, so I have like this room in my house. It's probably maybe about the size of this room. And it's, um, it's just got a bunch of weird shit that I've collected <laughs> and like, it's What's the weirdest shit in there. Oh man. Do you, do you, do you have a list of like this um, is the top weirdest thing I have? I, I don't know, man. It's, it's everything in there has kind of got its own like story. You know what I mean? And that's what I love about it. That's, like, yeah, it's, uh, so when I come, you know, I bring somebody in new and they're looking at it. It's just like, what the fuck? Like, you know, even like my girlfriend now, like, uh, you know, the first time like she came over to my house or whatever, it was like, all right, look, yeah. before we even go any farther, there's some things I need to show you because <laughs> <Like, laughs> if you, cause if you take a wrong turn, going to the bathroom and show up in to the dead room and it's just a bunch of bones and shit, you're gonna be like, what the fuck yeah. is this guy doing? Is this guy, is this, is this Dexter? Right. Here, just yeah. In a different. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, so one of the coolest things I think I have is it's a, a blood letter. Um, you know what bloodletting is? 
it's when they like talking about like in the old days where they would like basically just seep you of your own blood because of all the bad thing, the toxins. Yes. So they think like letting your blood. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little box and it's, um, it's got, I don't know, probably 10 or 11 razor blades in it. And it's got this little trigger that you pull back and the razor blades will like contract. And then it's got a little button that you hit and those razor blades will all come through and cut you. And the box is only, you know, uh, one and a half inch by one. It's like a one and a half square box or square inch box. Um, but yeah, that's what they would do. Like, Oh, you have the flu. Well, we're just going to bleed you out this much blood. How do they do it? Do they, do they put it on the arm or they put it somewhere different, and then different, they the button in it? Different places. Okay. There was different uh, – to my, to my knowledge, <laughs> they would put it in different places for different um, remedies. Or... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So – but like you would, you would bleed them out. They would have a bowl that had like measurements on it. So it's like, if you have the flu, we're just going to cut you here and bleed you out this much. We only need this much blood. Yes. And then you're going to be healed from that. And if it's something worse then you know, whatever might have to do it a couple of times. But uh, they said with leeches too, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, The difference is I, I kept this, you know, and it's still this box. Well, how, so do you do it? Like, have you traced it back to like when it was from or where, like in like where um, like, do you have any like, history or like no, lineage on no, it? No, man. I, I, uh, when I got it, I actually, I got it from one of my buddies, um, Dustin Smucker. He has like a really big, um, like, uh, basically same thing. Like I went to his house and saw his museum room and it's a museum house. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Like, this is the coolest <laughs> shit ever. Like, I mean, he's got like human skulls and like uh, just a bunch of crazy curiosity stuff. And I've just always thought it was really fascinating. Right. Um, so that kind of helped me like, okay, got to start somewhere. Just keep building it. So I go to, I go to a lot of like flea markets, stuff like that. Um, I just got a, a book, um, it's uh, prevention of cure and disease, uh, and it's from 1867. Oh, no and it's shit. like huge, man. It's how did you even come across that? I feel like those things would have been snatched up way. Well, and this is the crazy thing. We just went to this. It was a uh, just an antique store, and uh, my girlfriend Ashley, she found it, and she was like, "Hey, look at this." And I mean, it, it was like falling apart because it's so old. 1867, bro. And like I looked at the price tag, it said thirty five dollars, and I was like, "Get the fuck yeah, out!" Of I don't here. even know what I'd do with it, but I'd buy it. Oh, I bought it. Like and you know, once, once you see it in the room, it just makes sense. That's right. the thing. Like <laughs> everything that I buy and I put in there, I mean, the more that I add to it, it's just like, oh, okay. Like you know, um, what else do I got? I got a bone saw from the late eighteen hundreds. No shit. Uh, I got one of those. I need to see this. I feel like you do. You definitely need to come okay. over and check it out for sure. <laughs> yes. I have this, I have this old, um, Dennis, you know how, like back in the day, like your barber was your doctor and your dentist yeah, and all right. of that. Because it all, you know, it, it, yeah. obviously you're taking care of the body. So it all makes sense. Right. <laughs> right. So, and professionals were obviously right. always, always professional. professional. <laughs> yeah. They know everything. Trust me. I'm a, I'm a doctor. Barber. Yeah. <laughs> I stick a needle in your skin. So that makes me a doctor, right? Absolutely. <laughs> That's but wild. It's uh, it's one of these, it's the contraption that they would put in your mouth to hold it open. It's just like oh, okay. this metal thing. Uh, and I mean, it looks gnarly. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, I've had a root canal and they've improved. On yeah. Those procedures, yeah. I can tell you that. <laughs> Luckily for all of us. Um, what else? I bought a, uh, you know, like Forrest Gump. The movie when he's like has the leg braces on oh, yeah. and he's running and they start breaking apart. Well, uh, I'm on a bunch of these like sites on Facebook or whatever. And one of them was um, just this dude posted it and I just happened to look at it at the right time. And it was just this leg brace, but it's only from the knee down, but it's like it's the leather strap around and then the okay. metal metal rod on each side and the old boot. This thing's old as fuck, dude. I couldn't imagine ever actually wearing it. But uh, he wanted twenty bucks for it, and I wasn't gonna not buy it for twenty bucks. Exactly. So it was Sometimes, like, so some sold, things are so cheap know? that you just have yeah. to buy them. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like it all sounds really dumb, but then when you put it all in one room, it kind of builds its own aesthetic as right. far as like what it is. Well, it's like a museum. Like you walk yeah. in there, you go, "Holy shit!" Like all these things, and like people, you forget like each one has their own little tie back yeah. to its history and its story and. 
it's it's so fascinating to think about some of the things that like and it's it's a good remembrance too of all the like especially collecting stuff from like the eighteen hundreds, like you realize how quick we've gone oh, from man. you know, yeah. hey, we're gonna cut you and you're just gonna bleed and that's gonna make you feel better. Okay, sure. The bad the bad's inside of me, let's let it out, I guess. You know what I mean? So like how fast we've you know, grown and how fast we've you know, transitioned into all these new, you know, phenomenal, ridiculous things that we've created. But, um, so Chad Bueller, the owner of our shop, he bought me for Christmas the one year. It's probably one of the fucking coolest things I own, like, period, honestly. Like, uh, it's an antique coroner's kit. So, like, uh, it's a it's basically a briefcase that like locks and you would carry it into like the morgue or whatever. And when you open it up, it has all of the tools that you would need to get into a cadaver. And then it has all these different things like it has this shit called scab remover, which I'm like, yeah. And like uh, this like paste for like a uh, wound filler. And I mean, it's wild. Bro. Where's that from? Like, did, uh, it's, able to trace it's, that back it's, uh, or? it's early 1900s. Cause in, in the back of it, there's like all these cards and it's like the people that they would call. So it'll, and most of them are from Pennsylvania. So one of them is like, it's um, like actual, like cards for actual people. That, yes. Yes. That's fucking so it's cool. like, so it'd be like, Oh, their teeth are fucked up. You need a dentist. I'll call this guy. You need uh, new hair, you know, something you'll call this guy. It was like all these different cards for different businesses that they would use to present to present the body for the. Yes. Funeral? And then there are all these what? different pigments that they would use for makeup. And then the one the crazy one is there's this little like a uh, block that's like an air freshener. It's like raspberry scented or some <laughs> shit that you would just open up and like kind of toss in the casket so they didn't smell like right. death <laughs> and embalming people. fluid. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, he got that for me for Christmas one year. And I mean, it's a full set. Like everything is there. And I was just like, get the fuck out of here. Don't know what he paid for it. Don't care. (laughs) But super, super thankful to have it. Like, I mean, it just like, yeah, I was just looking at it like, dude, you know me way too well. Like (laughs) this is like the average person would be like, what the fuck is this? But I was like, oh my God, it's like getting a Super Nintendo for Christmas. You know what I mean? When you're a kid, like I was so pumped about it. Well, nothing else like that's, how many of those are out there? Like how many ties do we have back to something like that from our history out there? Yeah. I have no clue. To have stuff like that, like museums. I wish it's like, as you get older, like I wish I would have had, I wish I, I guess I would have had agency and understanding of my own curiosity back then, because it would have been like, Oh, when I go to a museum or when I take my history class and I hear this guy that, you know, talking that's been all over the world and traveled and has like seen these places. Like I'd rather, I like there's, we talk, I've talked about before where um, my history teacher had gone everywhere. Like he, he had pictures of Hitler's palace in like Sweden or whatever. Like, Cause he had been there. He had like pictures of, you know, all these different places in Japan. Uh, I think I've told the story before where like I was flipping through. This is the, the only thing I ever remember about his class after all the things that he's done. <laughs> the only thing I remember was well besides the fact that he'd fall asleep mid teaching he was a really big guy he's like 600 plus pounds and he just kind of like, nice <laughs> but i remember flipping through like he always follow albums and it was like hey you know mr teacher like w- what's the deal with all these like they just look like regular people and they were they were of asian descent obviously and i'm like well what's what's the deal he was like well he's like that was my trip in japan um and you know He's this is what he told us. He's like they they hold uh sumo wrestlers in really high regard. Yeah. So they thought I was a sumo wrestler and I couldn't like tell them no and they wanted pictures with me. So I got pictures with them and I put them all in my photo album. Nice. It was like be able to sit and listen to some of those people talk. Like I wish I I wish I would have had the same like reverence for some of those things now, like realizing to connect the history and the understanding of all those things and it would have been fascinating yeah. to actually understand them. I, I, uh, I love like, um, I've always been really into like, uh, Asian culture. Like I, I love it. Um, but, and I'm, I might be butchering this cause again, I'm an idiot, but, 
Um, I've, so this, we, like I said, I've, we've been doing this for over a year and I butcher everything. So yeah. please go ahead. So, uh, <laughs> I remember like watching wrestling and being like, Oh, you know, there's Yoko Zuna, right? Yoko Zuna or, you yep. know, and, uh, I thought that it was like him, but then I, I found out later that that is a name given to sumo wrestlers. It's like a title or yes. Oh, okay. So it's not, I never knew that. yeah. So it's not like one person. Yeah, you you might want to check this to be sure, but I'm Just pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm we, pretty we, sure. We but that's it? that's what Castle? it is. Castle that Star. it's it's like a, a name given to a champion sumo wrestler. Oh, so like. Just- once. It's the highest rank in sumo. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. When you he was pull just it used... up, there is like a specific person. Right. Yeah. From, from 66 wrestling. Sixty-six to two thousand. Yeah. But yeah. it's sixty-six. Oct- oh, that's what that's where he lived. Yeah. You talking about the yeah, wrestler? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That was okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I remember watching. Yeah. 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 Him and Gold Dust. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, Gold Dust. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool because um, you know, I I heard about it later and I was like, that's not him at all. And then I found out, oh, this is an actual like a title given to somebody that's done this. Like, uh, what's does it does it have like a definition of what it actually Yoko is, is? Is it Yokozuma? Yeah, it's the highest rank in sumo. Okay, so it's like a the black name belt. literally means horizontal rope, which comes from the most visible symbol of their rank, hmm. nice. which is worn around the waist. Right. Oh huh. yeah, so it's like a super black belt. And yeah. Like, Whatever other, oh, I never knew that. See, even I'm learning new things so, every day, yeah. every day, learning new things. <laughs> is that the title Elon Musk is shooting for? <laughs> you, you, can see what? Yeah, you can see that video where he uh, does some sumo against the dude. No, what? Yeah, you can probably what? pull it off. I think, he, I think he won too. I swear, look, look that shit up. That's because he's a robot alien, dude. He. That He's guy. something special. Training I, to fight Putin. I, <laughs> I watched that thing where they were talking about, like, you know, he wants to build that super highway under California. Oh, yeah, the tunnels. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I think it was Joe Rogan was talking to him, and he's like, how did you get him to do it? He's like, oh, I just asked him. Yeah. And he's like what, do you, like, what do you mean? You just asked him. And he's like, I just asked him if I could do it. It's like nobody really owns the land all the way under there, so they couldn't really tell me no. I have the money to afford it, so I just did it. I was just thinking to myself, like, what the fuck right now? Like, if I have the money, I can just build a fucking burrow underground and live there because nobody owns it. Like, that's that's dope. Yeah. I hate- Is that real? Get, or is that get photoshopped? Out, get out of here. Look at those glutes. <laughs> get, that's wild. I didn't realize he did that. There's no way that he does. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. He's got to be an alien. Do you or see? Uh, you see Will Smith sh- uh, slap the shit yeah. out of Chris Rock last night. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's real or not, but I there's no way it wasn't. I I've heard. I all right. Listen, I've I've seen. <laughs> Wait on me. I've seen both sides of the story where people are like, "Well, they're trying to get ratings." Yeah. Chris Rock was confused as fuck when it happened. And I don't know. Did you watch the video of it? I did. Okay. I did watch the video of it. Yes. I, yeah, I've been, ha- so that's what I had told somebody earlier today. It was like, you know, like I saw it right when I woke up. Cause I do this and we talk about a lot of different things. Yeah. So like, I, you know, had the feelers all the way out there and I saw it and I'm like, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just going to let this one slide. I'm just, I'm not even going to like dig in. I'm, yeah. I don't even care. But then like people like, because we've talked about so many things. People are like, did you see this? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I sent it. Like, I sent it. Like, as soon as I saw it, I like, uh, copied the link, sent it to, um, you know, a couple of the dudes I work <laughs> yeah. with. And then instantly, like, then I got on Facebook and then I saw that it was literally everywhere. And I was like, now I'm that fucking guy. Yeah. God, that, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> cool. so you're glad you feel that. You yeah. Want to be like, I was yeah, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> You would have saw it without me showing it to you. I should have just waited for you to say it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Either way, I guess my, my whole thing was if it's, if it's, whether it was real or if it was fake, to me, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't think either of them did necessarily anything specifically wrong. And I think they both got what they deserved. Like, so it's like, I don't think it's like, yeah. It's not like he went up there and like knocked him out and like kicked him. Like, you know what? Like, uh, you said some things that I probably feel like. You know, you're going to make the joke. The joke wasn't that funny. That's fine. You got well, slapped for it. That's fine. Let's call it a day. <laughs> yeah. It, I guess it was the whole, like, she has, like, alopecia, so yeah. she was losing her hair. 
And that I didn't know that before. And I was like, well, if he's just making a joke about her not having hair, and be, you know, that's one thing. Right. But okay, now you're making, and you know, his. I'm not gonna get into Will Smith's life. Who fucking cares? But yeah, uh, if you're taking the the point of reference as it, all the things as it is, like yeah. I was like, well, hey, you know, if someone's making fun of my wife for some kind of medical condition that she can't control, like at, by name, yeah. at the fucking what well, Oscars or whatever yeah, it was, like, yeah. you might get your ass slapped too. And I, I think it. it's like yeah. yeah, like and it's not like I said, it's, it wasn't excessive. Yeah. He went up there and just slapped him and said, "Hey, keep my wife's out of wife's name out of your mouth." Yeah, and it's like okay. Like yeah. I feel like there, I feel like more problems could be handled that way, and just and they're handled and they're done than suing and all the other different things and yeah, canceling but, and I don't know. I think, yeah, I've probably said some things before that I could oh, probably deserve a slap hasn't? from. Who hasn't? <laughs> there but the a... issue is, does he get in trouble for bitch slapping Chris Rock? Well, that's or, what I'm saying. I don't not. think he should. So like, right? But. Everybody saw it. So now what? Now are people just going to be go around bitch? I mean, I feel well, like the world would probably be a better fair, place. Fair, but- fair is fair is fair. He should, in my eyes, I mean, he should be tried as anybody else. Chris Rock did in press charges. End of story. End of story. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Personal matter. Yep. Done. Done. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. If Chris Rock would have been like, yeah, I'm pressing charges, that would have been a whole other thing, but he didn't. So who cares? Yeah. I mean, he Move seemed on. fine. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he was like confused. Right. I don't think Chris Rock would have intentionally sat there and taken a slap to the face from Will Smith. I think he would. You think he would? They're actors. Of course he would. Yeah, I mean, they're actors, but he didn't know what the fuck to do. He's just like, uh. I mean, if it was real, Will Smith is kind of a bitch. Like, if you. (laughs) In in what regards, I guess? Like, his his slap power? (laughs) Just his stance, the whole thing, just from just start to finish. Or maybe it's just because he just, maybe he didn't realize what he was doing when he walked up there and then was like, I'm I'm already up here. Yeah, Yeah, I'm going to slap you. I don't know. He called Kanye first. Hey, what do I do? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. It's but yeah. Rock Chris did recover pretty good. He was like, I just got bitch slapped yeah. by Will Smith. Like yeah. okay. he played it off good. Um, so I could see it either way. If it it could have been real, it could not have been. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, I like it was one of those things where I have multiple people, it's like either way, like I don't think either of them are necessarily like wrong enough to elicit any more outrage or whatever. It's hey, oh, yeah. it is what it is. Drop like, it. How, how many times like do people like just talk shit at the bar and want to get in a fight with somebody or whatever it is? And like, Oh, I'd, I'd punch that bitch. Bye, bye. Like, would you though? Like, would you like, and if you do, all right, you punch them and it's done. And they're like, all right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll keep your wife's name out of my mouth. And okay. It's settled. Oh, go away. I don't know. But yeah, it wasn't very smart. <laughs> you know, that's like one of those things like you do it. With intentions of keeping your wife's name out of his mouth. But now you just put it all over the world. Yeah. And now that's all anybody's going to talk about is like you kind of just did the opposite effect. Like could have, you know, just sat and done nothing. I don't know. I gained a little bit of respect from if it's real. If it's not. Oh, fake, I mean, I, I understand like, it okay. to the fullest. <laughs> I, I get it. Like, yo, dude, don't talk shit about my girl. Get smacked. What's yeah. up? But at the same time, like. The goal was to not have people talk about your wife. Now she's in, yeah, all over social media today because of it. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. So it's like it kind of did the opposite effect. Yeah, doesn't she have like a TV show and something too? Oh, who fucking knows? I don't pay attention to celebrities like that. Yeah, she does. And a lot of shit gets stirred up and she stirs it up. And So maybe he's just trying to increase her ratings. Yeah, who knows? I don't, I don't know. know. I, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't really follow celebrities like that. Yeah, that's basically the end of it. Was like, but it's like I'm like I I had just like uh, I forget what I was. Oh, I was just scrolling. I was actually watching your guys's podcast, and then as I'm going through YouTube, it popped up and was like Will Smith smacks bitch smacks Chris Rock, and I was like, <laughs> all right, well before I go to the next video, I'm just gonna click on this real quick, and then it was <laughs> just like to make sure, yeah, and then I was like, I am not disappointed in that. Like, I mean. <laughs> You could hear it. Oh if, yeah. If it was fake, there was some really good sound editing going yeah. on there. I don't know, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think feel like people could go with a good slap and every now and then Absolutely. myself included. Absolutely. You know, there's probably quite a few times that I probably deserve it. I mean, I'm glad it doesn't happen, but <laughs> you better watch what you're asked for. 
If you're gonna, you if basically start, just asked for it. If you're gonna start slapping people, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's uh, at the end of the day, it was like I don't care about either of it. So yeah, that's cool. Like I don't know. I don't know if you would have knocked him out. Oh, that okay. would have been hilarious. That would have been, been yeah. hilarious. Well, that was my point. I'm I like, mean, you know what? Like the only thing I was like, the joke wasn't funny, but what makes it funny is that if you're willing to get smacked for it, that makes it a little funnier. Like yeah. even if it's inappropriate, like all right, if you're if you're willing to be cool about it afterwards, you're like, all right, yeah, yeah, I deserve that. It's definitely it's definitely not a like you should go out and hit everybody, no, you know, type no. scenario. But at the same time, like I didn't expect to see it. Was it funny? If you say that it wasn't, you're kind of fucking lying to yourself. Like yeah. it was. No, and the, I'm honestly, saying the joke wasn't that funny. Oh yeah, but him absolutely. getting slapped was. The, I kind think. Of I think even funnier than that was seeing the reactions from all of the other celebrities. Have you seen that? It's I like saw, it's I just, a picture. I, 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 yeah, that, what, it was funny. I just I just mentioned this to her a little bit uh, a couple hours ago. I I ran across that, and all I saw, everyone was so surprised. Did you notice? Ryan Gosling. Oh, he was the, the bottom, best. Right? Like, He's like laughing like, oh, yeah, just yeah, that was the funniest yeah, he part. was. He <laughs> was the best one. He was the best one. Oh, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm glad somebody else saw that. Yeah. 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 So I was like, OK, that's fine. that was. Yeah, that was that was uh, to me. That was kind of the best part. Of yeah, because I had to ask her. I was like, who is that guy that was on the notebook? Yeah. And she was like, uh, Ryan Gosling. I was like, yeah, that guy. Yeah. So he was laughing. At it. That's how it would have been. I'm like, oh, <laughs> they fucking call me Ryan Goosling at the shop uh, all the time. Sons of bitches. I know, them guys, they suck. I'm not sure that's probably not the worst thing that I call you. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. I've heard Josh talk some some real, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. That is funny. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like a weird, I bet it would, be, you know how hard it, th- I bet, how about this, though? how hard would it be to slap somebody on a glass stage with dress shoes and not lose your balance? Because I didn't even think about that until now. Maybe thinking about that's that. why I thought he looked like a bitch. He did look funny. I, I thought yeah. he looked funny in the slap. Maybe it's because it yeah, was. Like, you're you don't there. have traction. It's not no, like you're wearing tennis shoes and you. you okay, know. I retract my statement. Yeah, right you need though. some yeah. like good traction to get. You've seen. If he would have ran and slid, bro, he could have. He could have. Uh, what's that? Uh, Tom Cruise, where he slides across uh, the. I know what you're risky talking. Risky business. Yeah, yeah. yeah risky he could have. He could have risky business all the way across that. Slide by. Uh, yeah, because that would have been even worse. Oh, if you would have yeah. gotten up there and slapped him and fell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's I, feel, a... I feel like if they would have showed DiCaprio, he would have just made the same face as uh, Django. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure, I'm surprised they haven't oh, that, no. made that meme yet. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for I, sure. I did hear, speaking of DiCaprio, I did hear a funny, an actual funny joke to someone. I didn't see it, but they said mentioned that. Um, how much right or Leonardo DiCaprio has done for you know the green environment, and the environment, and everything else that um, I can't they they and they they made fun of him for something, but then they were like he's done so much for the environment that you know he's he'll leave a better world for his girlfriends to live in, and I was like okay that's that's funny like, <laughs> okay, like okay. leave Leo alone <laughs> yeah I it's do. not his fault he's a beautiful man. He's a great actor too. Yeah, I do be loving me some Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, he's got some wild movies. Yeah. What was that? Uh, Inception's a good one, but the the one that's always messed with me the was The Revenant. No, that was good too. That the was really uh, good. Shutter Island. Oh yeah. Oh. Fuck yeah. me. I remember Titanic. Yeah. Oh, not Titanic. Oh. Okay. Fuck, fuck off, Cass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a good. No, movie. I remember watching Shutter Island. I'm like this is a good movie. Then all that, all of a sudden at the end, the entire thing just collapses on top of you, and you're like, no. Yeah. What's yeah. the ending? I don't know. No one does. Yeah. Fucking with me. Well, that was the whole thing with Inception too. It's like, yeah. What the fuck is actually going on here? Like it's so hard. You have to watch it. It's like the Matrix. Like the Matrix didn't get the. Uh, I mean, I can't say that it didn't get what it deserved, but like it took a long time. Yeah, you had to watch it a couple times to mm-hmm. really understand it. And I think that that shit was so dope. Not not necessarily the other ones, but like the original one was like, oh shit, this is. Yeah, have you watched the new one? No, I haven't watched it yet. Have you watched? Are you a fan of all of them? Yeah. Well, I've seen all of them. I want to go back and watch them in order. Yeah, you kind of yeah. do. It's it's worth if you if you enjoy the series. It's worth the watch. Yeah. If you don't, it's not worth it. You have to, you have to enjoy the ride that you're on, but it's a, uh, you know, it's, it gets people thinking. I mean, I, that's a, that's a movie that's really 
there's not too many movies that have really fucked with people's brains and like, so like it's a bad thing because I don't know. I, I watched uh, it was a documentary. It was I don't remember if it was about the Matrix or it was about like. Oh, hold that thought. I got a piss. Where am I going? Yeah, let's do it. We'll take a break. All right. Um, back from the restroom break. Um, but yeah, Tony had to head out. It's uh, we're doing it at a time we don't normally do it, and he's a busy man. And apparently, he's just took started a couple more jobs i guess i don't know mustache maintenance the must- <laughs> mustache <laughs> maintenance. yeah um i remember what was it oh matrix oh we yeah left off. um oh it was i can't remember if it was a documentary or something else but it was a story i, I watched this story about the guy who watched the matrix so much he ended up like murdering his own parents what tony just mentioned that to me when you guys went upstairs Did he, we, i don't remember what it was it was a, it's a you no know, he was confused like he didn't know if he was in the matrix he goes i think he killed his dad and i said i think we talked about that on the show and he killed both of his parents in the basement yeah with a shotgun he just and like his one of his parents like didn't die at first so he like emptied the shotgun into them and he was basically like look like he thought he was in the matrix so like he like well the only way to get out of the matrix is to you know just end it all and he was in it was like a, I think it was a documentary of him from prison years later that they talked to him. And it was like, so like, obviously like there's, there's a lot there that like people want to like, Hey, we shouldn't, you know, not to encourage that. Obviously we don't want to encourage that. Right. If a movie's so thought provoking that it breaks people, like, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I, you know, I honestly, <clears throat> I don't know. Well, the, like, The Matrix was based off of um, the simulation theory, right? Which is like, we're not going to get into that because that's all. Yeah, we don't have to. Yeah, next time, next time we can get into that. I would, I would would love to get into that sometime. I'm here for it Um, because I I love that shit. Yeah, but but I gotta uh, work tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) But um, that that definitely like, uh, you know, that's a rabbit hole in its in itself. Um, especially considering the timeline. Oh yeah. In the last, you know, like we talked about from the eighteen hundreds we've mentioned. Yeah. To where we're at. Like where are we gonna be a hundred years from now? Fuck. Dude, I, I I'm was, almost kinda glad <clears throat> I won't be around. So um like I was saying, like I you know, I've been watching um this podcast a lot, just you know, catching up and just trying to like get an get an eye for everything, you know, what I was getting myself into, I guess. I'm a big idiot. Uh well you know, you're definitely big. I don't, I don't know. If you, I don't know. I wouldn't call you an idiot. I'm, I ain't trying to get. Uh, you know, I'm I'm no Chris Rock. I ain't trying to get smacked no, or whatever. I, I'm but, a lover, not a fighter. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, those uh, you know, when you, I forget where the fuck I was going with that. Um, the Matrix, the podcast. Catching. Oh up. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's completely off topic. But while I was like in between them, you know, like mm. um, I stopped for a little bit, and then like I go back in, and and there was this. Uh, I love animals. Like I'm a. I I know a lot of random shit about animals because I love them, which is weird to a lot of people because I do. Like you know, I have them taxidermied, and like I I don't do the taxidermy so much, but I got. I think there's a reference there. Yeah. From preser- well, like preserving the idea of it. Yeah. But I, I watched this, uh, it was like a 13 minute thing about five times that, um, scientists drugged animals and it's like a YouTube video. So I'm like, there's no way I can't watch it. Oh, you know what brutal. I mean? But it was like, uh, and it all made sense. Like they, they took an octopus, which fascinating creatures. They are I, like, I, I haven't jumped down that rabbit hole because the oh, little I know, man. It, it kind of blows my mind. People get, I'll get a lot of tattoos of that. Yes. Like they're fascinating. Yes. I have heard the the doctor that I used to work for or with as a nurse, his wife got one and she's like, they are just so the amazing. Majestic creatures. So and I'm amazing. Like, really? Yeah. Well, like Google I, search and holy I, shit, they are. Yeah, the, I think with their intelligence level and everything else, like that's what people are like, these things are aliens. Bro, like, pe- these are <laughs> they they legitimately have been known to like in their uh at the zoo, like they know the guards that come through. They time out their patterns and they will climb out of their tank and climb into another tank and eat the fish in the other tank and then have enough time to climb back into Get their the tank without w- without being noticed. And the only way they found it out was because they had to watch the videos of it. 
And I don't know if you ever seen the video. An octopus, no matter. I swear, <laughs> this dude. This is why I don't dive into because no matter, me the fuck yeah, out. no matter how big they are, as long as they can fit their beak through it, they can fit their whole body through it. So you see a, a big octopus. And yeah, most like, people don't even know an octopus. Yeah, an octopus has a beak. Yes. Yes. The fuck. Yeah. Yeah. But they're they're super fascinating creatures, and they they use tools. Um, and like, so there's this documentary on Netflix. Don't trust anything that can use tools. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There's a documentary on Netflix called, um, my octopus teacher. And I just watch documentaries about everything. Like I like knowledge. I like, yeah. you know, that's what I do. I like just watching random shit, especially if it's about animals. And I watched it and I was just like, get the fuck out of here. Like, this is some of the craziest shit I've seen. So this, they, they would train themselves like, um, when they're being hunted, they would go to the bottom and there would be a bunch of shells and stuff around them. They would use all of their legs and pick up shells and everything and basically put them all around them Camouflage to themselves. disguise themselves. So like when anything floated by, it just looked like a bunch of, you know, and they can change all their colors in, a, in an instant. Uh, dude, they're, the more that I, the more that I read about them, or like the more that I see about them, they're they're one of the most fascinating creatures in the world. Um, There's yeah. something creepy about like in those the fish that can like pat like change patterns on their skin to like camouflage themselves well, and stuff like that. No, no nothing has like an even even a, you think of like chameleons being like the number one. Oh you know? yeah, no. But an octopus, the chameleons don't have shit on octopus. They they like are they, or octopi. Is it is it octopi or is it octopussy? So. <laughs> look, you you want to Google it, you're gonna come up with two different results. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say it's probably safe to not Google octopussies. Right. There's a dude. I googled old school like mouth opener because I wanted to see oh, what you're talking about. That's probably not a good idea, dude. Yeah, it's not. Make a sure good you have idea. The, yeah. Make sure you have the safe search. Turned right. On. Yeah. Not yeah. a good idea. Um, There's all kinds of separators that you can get. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean they're they're just they're honestly just fascinating creatures. But anyway, back to this whole thing. So um, they gave um a set amount of octopus ecstasy oh and and that sounds interesting and the goal was to see um what would happen because they're they normally live their life in solitary you know like they they stay by themselves so they're like okay well we're going to give this octopus some ecstasy and then we're going to introduce it to two uh star wars action figures <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, dude! I swear to God. What, do you know what this is called? Uh, oh, you said it was. Uh... It's it's on it's on it was on YouTube. It's called uh, five. What was it? Five times scientists gave drugs to animals. If it pops up, I would I would know the picture of it. But um, but they so they gave ecstasy to an octopus, and the ones that they gave ecstasy. And then there was like a control, you know, the other ones they didn't give anything right. to. So the ones that they didn't give any ecstasy to, they would rather hang out with the toys. Okay. The ones that they did give ecstasy to would rather hang out with other octopus. Which was against their nature. Yes. But it showed the affection of them being like, hey, like, we just want to be yeah. accepted too, you know, whatever. I've known some people that have done a lot of ecstasy and they just want to touch everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what was what were some of the other ones? They did. Um, what else did they do? They right. gave, did they give mice shrooms? Yes, they gave mice shrooms, and uh, they were like, "Well, we it was a very low dose, and we're not really positive if they were hallucinating." Yeah. But and they gave uh, they gave rats opioids or like like a yeah opioids, basically like uh, low set. Um, like Vicodin, you know, painkiller type right. shit. Cause they were trying to make a um, vaccine for heroin. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah. So, I mean, they, 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 that's it. Yes. Yeah. M see, so, so placebo. they gave him a Darth Vader and then uh, a, a Chewbacca toy. <laughs> and uh, they said that all the ones that were on the ecstasy wanted to hang out with the other octopus 
Yeah. This yeah. genome? They found that octopuses and humans octopuses. have a very similar gene for the serotonin transporter protein, which helps regulate the amount of serotonin in the synapses. That's most likely why the ecstasy had a similar effect on the octopuses as it does on humans. Because huh. the common ancestors of octopuses and humans went their video? separate ways more than 500 uh, it, million years I think it's like 13 minutes, minutes long. Yeah, this suggests yeah. serotonin has been playing a role in social behaviors for a very long time. Yeah, we'll Honeybees yeah, already watch that seen video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that honey, honeybees and cocaine? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Dude, they're not that, already like... And that that's the hilarious thing. <laughs> so you know like when bees, like, you know how like, um, I don't know how much you know about bees, but like when they... Not enough, apparently. Okay. Well, they'll have bees that like, uh, they go out and try to find another nest or another good spot for them to Right. Yeah. I, I know bees, they have like a colony and they have like... Uh, like particular like job and jobs yes. and roles for each different yeah. sets of bees. There's worker bees. There's the egg bee. Oh yeah. 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 So they'll have bees that'll go out and try to find a new location. And when they come back, they do a dance. Right. And when they do that dance, that lets everybody else know how good it is and how far away it is and what the probability of them surviving is. Mm. What they found after giving these bees cocaine is that the bees came back and were just like, yo, bro, this is the coolest <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> And they were like, they basically just over exaggerated. Like yeah. okay. They just over exaggerated the whole thing. Like, they get there, they're like, God damn it, Daryl. This yeah, like, sucks. This, exactly. Yeah. That's ex <laughs> dude. I was laughing so hard watching this video. I was like, bro, I know those bees. I can, I can name some yeah. of them. I got, yeah, those oh, bees have names. Shit. That's funny. Yeah. That's, animals are, ah, oh, man, trying to figure out, like, because I think one thing we, we don't give enough credit to animals and, like, even, like, plants and shit we just oh, don't yeah. give them enough credit like i don't know how far you've ever gone down the rabbit hole of, all of it um, like trees and how they how they communicate and like yes. fungi around yep. the world how yeah. they can um you know that spooky action at a distance you know yeah. but inside our own earth like you know trees communicating and yep. fungus communicating like fungus communicating with trees yeah and yeah. not only like communicating i get like you know there's different like senders and id like inputs and outputs of you know nature that are connected but like shit that like does the exact same thing out of context that are completely separated from each other so like a, a fungus in you know south america ends up doing this weird thing and they realize the same fungus in like you know africa or whatever it is does it at the exact same time and it's like how like there's we yeah. don't have an explanation for that and yeah when we don't have an explanation for something i'm on board oh yeah that's yeah. fun like i don't yeah, I and I, I love that. Like, if there's if there's a documentary on Netflix and it's about animals, I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and I, that's what I do. Like, I'll sit and watch all of them. Like, I don't know. I just I, I think I find it fascinating. Like, people kind of suck, yeah, you know, you as, sure as a whole. Yeah, I mean, I think overall, like, I, I would like to say that we're like people are getting in a better place or whatever. But I'd who, say throughout, I, and that's I, that's a good point because like throughout we we lose the the reference of hey remember what it was like a hundred years ago yeah it's a lot better now yeah. remember it was like a thousand years ago i mean obviously you don't remember but remember what it was a lot like better than it was then. a year and a half ago Oof. yeah okay so things, <laughs> well, that's, that's that's yeah so i <laughs> that's mean a little different so but, things, yeah. but i mean things do you know things get better and it, it goes in it, it does go yeah. in waves yeah, like i sure. mean you hope that things get better whatever yeah. but with the animals like it for the most part other than us, you know, kind of destroying their shit, like their, their stuff stays pretty consistent. Yeah, it does. You know but what I mean? We put our shade on them of like, we forget that they, going back to nature is metal. Guess what? Animals fucking eat each other all oh, yeah. the time and they destroy each other. And sometimes they just do it for fucking fun. Yeah. Sometimes they eat their own babies. Yeah. Like, guess what? It's a wild world out there and you, it's, you either survive or you don't. Have you ever, speaking of, you know, have you ever uh, seen the, uh, I can't remember exactly what kind of ants it was, but they poured like a a metal, yes, a molten metal down there. Yeah, I was just yep. telling about. I was yep. just telling my kid about the other day. I, I need to find that video, but like they poured this the, metal down the all these. It's like a molten lead. Yeah, yeah. And they basically created a a negative cast of their holes and then excavated it. It's the coolest. Yeah, it is to see ever. like where they have people sell them as art. Yeah, they literally sell them as, as oh, art pieces. That. Um, cause they have like their own, you know, different branches of like what they do and what they're used for. And people can tell you like, yo, this is what this was. And it's like, cool. Well, you just killed all of them, but we appreciate 
the yeah. science behind it, whatever. I, I can't remember the one, the biggest one that I saw. I think it was something that they had, they had studied it for a while and they like, I think I may, I could be completely fucking wrong here, but I think they were like waiting for it. There was something that happened with the colony or they left or something happened. So they were like, all right, yeah, we're not really going to do much damage now. So now let's do it. But it was like the excavate this thing. And it was, I mean, it had to be like 50 feet across. It yeah. Was like, what? Even, even when you see normal ants, I mean, if you pour that down there, it's still like this big, you know, like probably three and a half feet tall and maybe three and a half feet wide. I mean, they're still even like the smallest ants, they still have yeah. big tunnels underground. Um, but so you, you, you do the, like the tree thing, right? Yeah. You, okay. So my dude, um, Dave, um, one of my best friends I've ever had, he, he works for Davy tree. Okay. Okay. And uh, he lives in um, Kentucky now. And uh, so him and some of his buddies, they, um, for I forget what it was, but they ended up climbing up this tree and um, attaching a camera to this tree where there's an eagle's nest. Okay. And it's got a live feed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. some of those. Camps, okay, yeah. so like I check it all the time. It's cause I'm, yeah, cause, them, yeah, because yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm an, I'm an animal person like that. So right now this eagle, it has two eggs and this mother eagle has just been like chilling on this nest. And every now and then you'll see her get up and move the eggs around and like sit down. And then you'll see like the, the male come in and like bring food or, you know, whatever. Right. Um, but it's just fascinating to watch. Like I'm pumped because I know like eventually sooner or later, yeah, that motherfucker's going to hatch and I'm going to sit there and watch like their first flight and stuff like that. Like, I just think that shit's so cool. Like it's weird. It's and it an animals, some animals, a lot, not all animals, but a lot of animals, they grow so fast. So like you, it's hard for like to wrap our brains around. We actually, um, I've talked about it recently. I built a chicken coop and we're going to have chickens and we have chickens in the next room over and we've only had them for about a week, but like, you go from this little tiny like fluff ball thing and then they're already starting to get their wings. Yeah. And I, I have a camera that watches them so I can check yeah. on my phone just to, you yeah. know, just to make sure, you know, I like to make sure that they got nice and warm, you know, they got all the things they need, but just to like watch them. It's like, these are fast. They're fascinating creatures. And I, what chickens, they say like chickens are basically like the, them and like alligators are basically like the only dinosaurs we have left or whatever. Like, how, how does an animal that they're because they're not that in the grand scheme of things they're not that smart you know chickens but they're smart enough for that they're you know they've survived this long yeah <laughs> i mean we've we've kept them alive a lot but That's true um so back to the praying mantis thing so um the Uthica that I was talking about, the yeah. egg sacs. Mm-hmm. So everybody says like, oh, they're endangered. They've never been endangered. There are so where many. Came from? I don't have a fucking clue. It's just because the only people that saw them, they're like, that's so rare. Yeah, that that's... you would see one because they blend in. They're they're like masters of their camouflage. And yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like they're really good at that. But in every egg sac, Uthica, it's um, like 50 to 500 in a single one. Okay. So the mass production. Yeah. So, uh, somebody bought me 10 of them, not knowing how many were in oh, each one. They geez. thought that it was like a single, uh, oh. like it was like a butterfly, you and know? Next thing you know, you got 10,000. And as right soon as I, o- as soon as I opened it up and saw it, I was like, oh no. And they were like, uh, what I, I realized do? now. <laughs> that I might have fucked up, and I was like, "What? Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all of these." Like, yeah. do I take these to like the local college? But it was, it, <laughs> yeah. Do something so, with them. <laughs> um, but I, what I did was in that uh, in my museum room, I took one of the Uthicas and I um, put up. I have like, uh, I travel a lot, you know, so I have cameras in my house, you know, and I put one up against the jar, and I put paper towels around it so you could see it. Okay. And then uh, I watched it hatch. Like, I I recorded it, basically. So then I went back and I time-lapsed that video. That's so wild. And I'm going to tell you right now, you don't realize how crazy something like that is until you see it. Like, uh, when we're done here, I'll I'll show you on my phone. I I, might have posted it on my Facebook or something, but um, it's crazy. Like, they come out and they're, like, yellow. And they come out from, like, a single – it's like a – I don't know. It's an egg sack. It has to hang. Right. And then like, you'll see one like 
worm its head out and it starts coming down like this silk strand. But then once it starts coming down, all these other ones start coming out behind it and then more and more. And you're just like, what the fuck? And then once they reach the bottom and they can all start like moving around, you can literally watch them oxidize uh, and turn green in front of you. Like, so when you watch them come out, they're yellow. But by the end of the video that I took, you can watch them turn green. It was the craziest shit. Yeah. And I was like, I I had seen it before, but like, I have all of these. I might as well try it. Like, I just want to see what happens. Like, you know, it's kind of like my own little science experiment, I guess. But uh, it was super cool. Like, I had to cut the video. I think it took, it was like two and a half hours total. But then I just kept time lapsing it and cutting it down and cutting it down right. to make like a minute long video of it. But uh, yeah, it was. I came home and like uh, I, every time I would come home from work, I would like check and be like, OK, no, they're here now. Boom. Now I'm going back to the cameras. I'm rewinding it. And, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Those time lapse, like we don't realize that, you know, we we think of 100 years being super long for us. It, it is. In the grand scheme of things, it's a blink of the eye. Oh, yeah. But for a lot of these animals and insects and all, everything else, it's like, I mean, what, you live for a year? Yeah. Like your entire lifespan is a year long? Like, whew. and to see it happen so quickly, it's fascinating. It's, yeah. Whew. Now you broke, you broke my brain. I think that's it. You broke my brain, Ryan. Hey. I appreciate it. I yeah, appreciate man. it. Um, yeah. It's been, it's been well over two hours now. Yep. So man, I, um, I really appreciate you coming on. Do you have anything that you have coming up or anything you want to pimp out? Um, pimp away. we're going to be up in Cleveland. Um, the first through the third at the, um, Huntington convention center for the Cleveland tattoo show. Come up, hang out. Even if you don't get tattooed, um, you can just buy tickets and yeah, yeah, it's check 20, it 20, 20 bucks a day. I think 40 days or $40 for the weekend. Um, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's just come check it out. You. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. I mean, you get to network with a bunch of other artists and, you know, just kind of see what's around and whatever. It's just an experience, man. There's something for everybody. They do sideshow things. They do like entertainment. It's not just all tattoos, but, um, if you get a chance, definitely come check it out. Um, swing by the shop and say, Hey, like we're always welcome to have people in just, you know, bullshit and check it out. You know, uh, studio Vitruvius tattoo, Worcester, Ohio. Other than that, man, I just appreciate you having me on. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll get together again. Maybe I'll get the hooligans on here. And yeah, let's <laughs> let's do it. I'm, I'm nervous about it, but yeah, I mean, it's I'm, I'm down for it. Let's do it. All right. I appreciate it, Ryan. Thanks. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, check out the website, chronic-curiosity.com to join us at the forum have some fun interaction pick you up a comfy t-shirt or if you just want to support the show and donate all that is on the website as well thank you until next time see you